they are the playmakers of Georgia's team. These two running backs get it done for them. Mark Rick's been known as a throwing throwing coach, but he's had to change tactics a little bit this year, and why not with those two? Well, speaking of Mark Rick, he is standing by with Chris Myers. And thank you very much, uh, Coach. A young team, right? You start four or five seniors. What, what did you tell your team about playing on this stage tonight? Oh, it's just going to be a great game. You know, we really don't know what to expect. Uh, you'd like to have some kind of point of reference, but we don't play anybody they play. They don't play anybody we play. And uh, we're going to find out here in the first few series just what's, what's about to happen. At least offensively, do you try and run the ball? I mean, you have a balanced attack to keep oh, yeah. their offense off the field. Well, we always try to run the ball, so we'll, we'll do that. And But we play action pass, and, and we'll throw a little screen here and there, whatever we do. We'll, we'll have a plan. Should see a lot of points. Thanks, Coach. Happy New Year to All you. Right, thank you. Okay, Coach Mark Rick. Tom? All right, Chris, thank you very much. Many have made the trip from the Hawaiian Islands. Some have just driven down the road from Bulldog Country. The coin toss is coming up next. Set for the coin toss here at the All-State Sugar Bowl. Colt Brennan taking a look at the coin, making sure there's a head and a tail. Sugar Bowl MVP, Archie Manning, to put the coin. And you have won the toss. You want to receive. Slide around with your back over there. Hawaii wins the toss, elects to receive to open the game. Get a look at some of the former Sugar Bowl most valuable players. Pepper Rogers in 54, Kenny Stabler, Archie Manning, Don McPherson, Eric Red, Rohan Davy. We're ready to go. Are you? You're watching the BCS Bowl Bash on Fox. The Hawaii offense is the funnest offense in America. Jason Rivers is the most physical, toughest, meanest kid I've ever had at a receiver position. Devon Bess is our, our raw talent. He's the playmaker, man. Ryan Grice Mullen is our flash. He's the guy that takes a three-yard route and turns it into a 60-yard touchdown before you know it. C.J. Hawthorne is our inspiration. We can't wait to get a look at this offense in person led by Colt Brennan. He gave us the scouting report on each of his receivers. Andy Bailey to handle the kickoff duties tonight for the Bulldogs. Malcolm Lane, 89, has brought back two kickoff returns for touchdowns this season. And he fields from his own 10. The All-State Sugar Bowl is underway and Lane out to the 40 and is tackled at the 43-yard line. Well, here comes Colt Brennan, the 2007 WAC Offensive Player of the Year, finished third in the Heisman Trophy balloting. He holds 29 NCAA records, including passing touchdowns with 131. He is extremely, if not enormously accurate, 71% completion percentage. And they're not all dinks and dunks downfield. I mean, I'll throw it behind the line of scrimmage. He can throw it downfield and does it very well. Wide open offense. Four receivers, one blocking back. And down goes Brennan. It appeared as though there was a whistle before the snap of the football. That's why everybody stopped. The flag came from the far sideline in front of the Hawaii bench. Play a game by the offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. That is a very unusual start. Opening kickoff, great enthusiasm, bringing it back over the 40-yard line, and you get a delay of game coming off the bench, considering Hawaii doesn't huddle very often. So that's very unusual for the Warriors. June Jones took over in 1999. Of course, Mark Richt in his seventh season at Georgia, 71 wins against just 19 losses. Trying to show some emotion, something he thought his team direly lacked the early part of this season. Again, movement. Kayoni Steinhoff, the right tackle. Ball start, 78 on the offense, five yard penalty, remains first down. First two plays of the game 
penalties against Hawaii. Many people would say noise would be a factor. Well, they have a great contingent of Hawaii fans here. Noise will be a factor, but even more so, nerves. The big stage for Hawaii, so much to prove in this ball game. There are a lot of teams in the WAC that would tell you Hawaii should start every series first and 20 the way they score. <laughs> Might even things up for them. Lennon looking around and incomplete on his first pass to the intended receiver, Devon Best. Best has a chance to go down as arguably the greatest receiver in the history of college football. We'll talk about that throughout the night. Bess already the WAC record holder with 286 receptions. Up front, a solid offensive line. Satelli, the left guard, a first team all WAC performer. Four receivers, Rivers, Bess, Bryce Mullen, Hawthorne, could play anywhere. Mark Rick told us, as did defensive coordinator Willie Martinez, they could play in the SEC, the Big Ten, the Pac-10, you name it. 0 for 2 is Brennan and hits the deck for the first time tonight. Marcus Washington put him to the ground. The Bulldogs defensively. Up front, Marcus Howard leads a charge with seven and a half sacks. This unit allowed 21 points per game. A linebacking core. Danell Ellerby, their leading tackler, not officially in the starting lineup. We'll see plenty of him. And Keelan Johnson, a senior, two-year starter, the strong safety, the heart, if not the soul, of this Georgia defense. Third and 20. They dump it off to Farmer from the fullback position. He's run down from behind. So after back-to-back -back penalties before they ever got off a snap, Hawaii forced to punt it away on the first completion by Colt Brennan. Really could not have been a better series for the Georgia Bulldogs on defense to start this game. Hawaii, so dangerous on offense, moves themselves back on the first two, first two snaps of the game with penalties. Then they can't make up the yardage. And Georgia's defense looking very good, very comfortable on this first series. Well, you think about 12 games, their punter, Tim Grosso, has only punted 32 times the entire year. Mikey Henderson, the senior from Buford, Georgia, stands back at his own 15. A hit the same time the ball hit Henderson and penalty flags litter the field at the Superdome. Keenan Jones delivered the blast, but he will be penalized for it. So much emotion, so much at stake in this game for Hawaii, wanting to show everyone what they can do. And already we've seen how the emotion has gotten the better of them. And for Keenan Jones, very, very close to helmet to helmet contact on the hit, leading with his head on this play. We have a Pac 10 officiated kick crew. catch interference by the kicking team. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Tom, Hawaii is so excited emotionally they are really over the top at this point they've got to find a way to settle in if i'm georgia with this field position i go misdirection i go play action i try and get something cheap early in this ball game before hawaii's defense settles in well, hopefully henderson is all right he took quite a lick from jones so now matthew stafford the sophomore from dallas texas in his second year as a bulldog starting quarterback Quick throw, and the catch is made by Sean Bailey, the senior out of Alpharetta, Georgia. Grew up in a football family. His father, Stacy, caught 211 passes in an NFL career with the Atlanta Falcons. Stafford made a lot of mistakes last year, but hey, the starter is a freshman in the SEC. This year, 18 touchdowns against just nine interceptions. They think he has a chance to be a great one. He turned the whole ratio around seven touchdowns to 13 interceptions as a freshman. Sean Marino in the slot position. Movement again along the line. Ball start, 63 on the offense, five yard penalty, remains second down. Well, it's not just Hawaii that's excited about this one. Georgia starting out a little sloppy too. And, and think about the time off between games. 
We're over 30 days for both teams coming into this one. Might take a little while to get the rust off. Well, this offensive line is young, to say the least. They start three freshmen, two of them true freshmen. The leader is the senior from Rennes, Georgia, Fernando Velasco, their center. Thomas Brown, the senior, starts in place of Marino. Sean Bailey, Massaqua, the wideouts. And Brandon Sutherland does everything for this Georgia offense. Empty backfield, they throw it to Chris Durham. And he has first down yardage into Hawaii territory, shoved out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Mark Rick told us that it's Durham who has been his most improved offensive player during bowl practice. And he shows it early in this game. Out wide, you'll see Durham 16 get the pass, but watch number 20, Thomas Brown. Look at the block right there. Beautiful job on the lead, and then after that, Durham lowers his shoulder and runs through the tackle of Jacob Patek. and 10 after the 14-yard pass completion. This is Thomas Brown, and he lunges forward inside the 40, spotted at the 39, a gain of six for Brown, who has been injury-riddled the last two years. He is Georgia's sixth all-time leading rusher, but tonight is just his 12th start in the last two seasons. You see, he still finished with 700-plus yards this year, including 139 in the final game of the season against Georgia Tech. Brown again. First down to the Hawaii 32. Let's check in downstairs with Chris Myers. Tom on the Georgia sideline, a developing story here with Noshawn Moreno, of course, a left ankle sprain against Georgia Tech in the fourth quarter. He re-injured it about a week ago in practice. The last two practices have been okay, but I was in the training room and they have protected that with a special wrap. He told me he's fine to go. But the trainer said we won't know until he gets at game speed and gets hit at game speed. So they'll be watching Marino closely once he's in the game. Great stuff, Chris. Thanks. Marino, six 100-yard rushing games this season. And they'll give it to Brown again. And for the first time, slowed down at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a pickup of two. Brandon Sutherland, the fullback, was the lead blocker on this last play. And, Tom, you've already noted he does a little bit of everything for the Bulldogs. Can run the ball from the fullback position, although his carries are down this year as opposed to last season when he led the Bulldogs in rushing. He can go into the slot, catch the ball, and we've already seen him as a lead blocker tonight. Second down and seven at the Hawaii 30. And now Stafford will check off. Short drop. Incomplete. It brings up third down and seven for the Bulldogs. Tony Wilson, the receiver, slipped, making his cut, giving Stafford no chance to complete the pass. First third and long situation of the, on the night for Georgia. Let's see what Greg McMacken dials up for Hawaii. And they've had favorable down and distance on defense. They like to go after the quarterback. Hawaii's defense ninth nationally, averaging better than three and a half sacks per game. And they hand it off to Brown, and he just dances behind some of those big offensive linemen and very close to a first down. He needed to get to the 23-yard line. It looks like he got there. It is a first down. Concern for Georgia coming into the season was a young offensive line that's grown. Look here, Trenton Sturdivant, a true freshman. See how he pulls and helps seal, and then Brown reads it, and he gets a second block on Adam Leonard, number 44, finding the cut and getting back inside. Sturdivant, a 4.1 GPA coming out of high school, National Honor Society student, and a big hoss on the offensive line. First down at the Hawaii 23. This is Marino. And was he down or is he still going? You see where 
the official spots the football. With no more Marino, it's hard to tell whether he's ever down because you'll see throughout tonight, tonight, for those of you that have not seen the Georgia Bulldogs play, when he hits the ground, he is right back up running back to the huddle. This is what my coaches used to tell me when I was playing and all the, all my teammates. When you hit the ground, it's like an electric shock or act, act like the ground's on fire. Hop right up and get back to the huddle. Sean Moreno brings that kind of enthusiasm to the Georgia Bulldogs team. So all that list of freshman running backs in the history of the Southeastern Conference and where Moreno ranks with his 1,200 plus yards. He breaks it to the outside. Marino, touchdown, Georgia. A 17 yard touchdown burst for Marino. His 13th rushing touchdown this season. And now Katu for the point after. Not a good start at all for the Hawaii Warriors. A sloppy opening possession on offense and on defense. The running game of Georgia, an early strike. Amazing pictures are provided by the DLP. Amazing picture cam. DLP is the official HD TV of the BCS on Fox. It's amazing. It's the mirrors. And what they saw were 10 players from Hawaii in the box. Supposedly, that's what you do to stop the running game. Instead, Georgia's offensive line. Trenton Sturdivant, number 77. Chris Davis, 63. Fernando Velasco, 75. And Brandon Sutherland, the fullback, number 36, leading, chopped a huge hole that allowed the big touchdown run. But when you have 10 in the box and that happens, that's discouraging for a defense. Brandon Sutherland has just been such an outstanding player. I mean, he's not going to get the headlines, but he is a good football player. And when they need exterminating help, they'll be coming to him. Grandfather has an exterminating company. He's set to take it over when he's ready. Malcolm Lane from the 12 yard line and a big return on the opening kickoff and not bad here out to the 33 yard line. Hawaii gets the football back trailing the Bulldogs out of the SEC 7 nothing. 10 men in the box a box jumper scope helps explain. Beautiful look, and that's exactly what Georgia ran against the 10 in the box, which means someone is out on the island. There you have everyone by the line of scrimmage, the corner one on one. And then when they chop the hole up front, it's easy sailing for the freshman sensation. No Sean Moreno with some help out wide from Mohamed Massaqua, his wide receiver. So Hawaii gets the football for the second time. The Warriors lead the country in scoring, averaging 46 points per game. Quick throw to Jason Rivers. They run that play a great deal. Where he'll slip in from the far wide out spot and catch almost like a screen. And weaves his way for a 10 yard pickup. Exactly what it is. It's like it becomes a tunnel screen where he comes inside, tries to get a kick out block to the outside, seal to the inside, and he's supposed to catch it and get right into the alley, into the secondary. Exactly what was accomplished on that play. For Jason Rivers, a reception in now 50 consecutive games. Each team with one possession thus far, three and out for the Warriors. Nine plays, 66 yards for the Dogs. Brennan, a perfect toss, and the reception is made by C.J. Hawthorne to the 40-yard line, first down, Hawaii. This throw from Cole Brennan to the outside where only his receiver has a shot. But look at him throw it right over the top of the defensive back. Number three, Brian Evans. Watch this. It right over the top of Evans. And then knowing he's going to take the shot, Hawthorne still concentrates and comes down with the football. Hawthorne, a cornerback a season ago. 
Brought him back to the offensive side. He was their fourth leading receiver. We're going to take a look at that one upstairs to see if he had possession before he came down and if he came down in bounds. But Hawthorne, the fourth leading receiver with 57 catches on the year. Mercy. Our aerial coverage brought to you by Bud Light. Endless refreshment from start to finish. Bud Light keeps it coming. Welcome back to the All-State Sugar Bowl in New Orleans at the Superdome, the home of the BCS National Championship game presented by All-State coming up Monday night here on Fox. The play on the field stood, a completed pass to Hawthorne. So first and 10 Hawaii at the Georgia 40-yard line. Brennan fires quickly. Devon Best shot down by Brian Evans, but that's a five-yard gain. Best a three-time first-team all-whack performer. Was charged with a crime, driving a car which had stolen merchandise in it. He said he was being a good friend, doing a bad thing. He went to a youth detention center in Northern California, played in seven-on-seven -seven flag football, spent an entire year at that facility. They wound up playing a local high school in flag football, and that's where Hawaii saw him on tape. And I tell you what, he might have made a mistake as a youth, but he is a delightful young man. Tremendous young man. We've really enjoyed our time with him. Brennan, great protection. Open space, not a big scrambler, but good enough for a first down to the 28-yard line. A gain of seven. I love Colt Brennan's savvy, and doesn't it appear that Hawaii's settling in now? You know, Georgia already has bloodied them a little bit with the first score of the game. The mistakes have kind of been washed away. And on this drive, this looks more like the Hawaii that we've seen all year long. But Brennan looks downfield. Georgia takes away his receivers. He steps up and run it, runs it. I know that there's a concern about him doing that due to the concussion he had this year, suffered against Fresno State. Pialoa Polares, a true freshman, checks in for the first time, but they get the ball in the hands of Bryce Mullen. And he's to the 25-yard line. Let's head it downstairs to Chris Myers. After that initial series, when the offense came back to the sideline, it wasn't a coach. It was Colt Brennan who gathered some of the players and said, hey, let's stay calm. We were amped up to start. We're excited. Let's show that we belong here. It's what June Jones said in his opening remarks. Hawaii has to prove to everybody they belong here. And Colt Brennan told his offensive unit to do that. We have to calm down. Tom, Charles, looks like they're doing that on this drive. Well, they fell behind 21-0, as you mentioned, uh, against Washington, their last game of the season, and rallied back. You don't want to make a habit of that, especially against a team like Georgia. First down, quickly to Devon Best. Wow, what a move, and that's a five-yard pickup, although a penalty flag comes down. Man, what a move. Terrific move. Now, Willie Martinez, the defensive coordinator for Georgia, he set a goal of no more than three yards after every catch. For Hawaii, if they can hold them to that average, they would be in great shape. That actually was a pretty nice play by Georgia swarming, but Devon Best with that move ended up getting more than what looked to be what appeared to be there for him. The offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. Hold against wide receiver Jason Rivers. Told you a Pac-10 officiating crew tonight. Our referee is Brian O'Kane. This is what Hawaii has to avoid. They make positive plays and push themselves back into long distance situations. Even as explosive as Hawaii is, if you're playing behind the chains all night long, that's very difficult to go against the Georgia defense. For second down and 15 at the Bulldogs 33 yard line. Brennan hangs in there, finds Rivers. And he is chopped down by Asher Allen down to the 23-yard line. A pickup of 10. Look what William Martinez is doing right here. All right? Check out the linebacker. That's Akeem Dent, number 51. Watch him go to the middle of the field, almost like a Tampa 2 look, 
using a linebacker. Georgia all night long has had five defensive backs on the field, but they like to still play with their linebackers. So if there are three linebackers in the game, that means they're just going to have three down defensive linemen. Trips to the right. Rivers split left. Third and five. Looking for Rivers. Contact and a flag comes in. Asher Allen, like every cornerback known to man, saying he was pushed by the wide receiver. I understand that. Yep, you do. Your <laughs> former defensive back that. days at Tennessee. I get it. The tough part for Asher Allen, and the penalty will go against him, was going to be difficult for him if you're matching Jason Rivers. Remember, Cole Brennan said that's our, their most physical guy. And that's exactly what Jason Rivers is, a big body guy. Pass interference, number two on the defense. Automatic first down to spot of the foul. It's the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Asher Allen in great shape here. Rivers, mm. I think what they got him is that he had his hands on him through the entire route. And in college football, there's no five-yard rule about the bump zone. But your hands have to be off the receiver when the ball's in the air. Asher Allen had his hands on him the entire time. Ball spotted at the 18-yard line for the Warriors. Trying to tie this one up. 5.45 to play in the opening quarter. Brennan steps up, looking around. And he is hammered out of bounds by the freshman, Rennie Curran. What a get-off for the Georgia defensive line rushing the passer on this play. Jeremy Lomax, number 55, who got off really almost before the snap of the ball, but the officials determined he was still onside. He flushed Brennan early, got to the sideline, but mission accomplished for Georgia. No pass downfield, and Randy Curran got another hit on the quarterback, Colt Brennan. Brennan is hit on seven of his first nine for 48 yards. Screen to David Farmer, and the fullback is cut down at the... 17-yard line, a late flag comes in. Might be a late push against Hawaii against Jason Rivers blocking, knocking someone back into the pile as the play ended. After the play, dead ball personal foul, number 84 on the offense. 15-yard penalty, third down. That's the second big penalty on this drive against the wide receiver, Jason Rivers. Sometimes when you hear all the time how you don't belong somewhere, where people are questioning your credentials, you take your physical play to another level. And for Jason Rivers, who's a physical player to begin with, maybe a little bit of that has seeped into him tonight as he's trying to prove a point against the Georgia Bulldogs. But how about that screen pass, which looked like it had an open open area? And Georgia rallying back to the football. The speed we discussed in evidence on Georgia's defense on that play. So a pair of penalties after getting down to the 18-yard line, third and forever. The inside handoff goes to Polares, and he's to the fort or the 24-yard line. And June Jones will send out the field goal unit led by kicker Dan Kelly. Very important for the man they call the Iceman, Dan Kelly, to knock this one through the post. I know it's early, but they've had this drive. You just discussed it, Tom, how they got downfield, pushed themselves back with penalties, some mental mistakes. But if, but if they get three on the board, they've answered Georgia's touchdown, and that will still have a settling effect on the wide. 42-yard try for Kelly, who hit on 11 of 16 during the season. Good snap, good hold, good kick. So the Warriors on the board with 420 to play in this opening quarter. Very nicely done by Hawaii. They hurt themselves with penalties on this drive. Mental mistakes, but they have answered.
on the first drive a three and out drive for Colt Brennan and company hit on one of three the last drive perfect but a couple of penalties really hurt him forcing the field goal rather than trying to get into the end zone. One of the things about this game that people talked about coming into it was Georgia controlling the clock on offense and keeping Brendan on the bench. But without scoring, if you control the clock, means nothing against Hawaii. Georgia did that on their first drive. Hawaii, equally important for them. They don't have to worry about controlling the clock, but scoring, obviously, a key. Georgia's defense happy holding them to three. Asher Allen from the four yard line. Still on his feet. All the way out to the 35 yard line. Timo Payapule on the stop. The Georgia offense, led by sophomore quarterback Matthew Stafford, is thrown for 18 touchdowns this season. He will spread it around, use a lot of different receivers in the tight end. No Sean Marino, the SEC's freshman of the year. 1,273 yards already with a touchdown tonight, his 13th this season. First down. Marino, the 17-yard touchdown run, but he will be sharing time in the backfield tonight with the senior, a healthy senior, Thomas Brown. And that's not a problem for Georgia. 139 yards for Thomas Brown against Georgia Tech. The only thing that slowed him down in his career has been injuries. Same with Craig Lumpkin. He was their leading rusher last season and has missed nearly all of this year. This is Brown. That'll be a pickup of eight out to the 43-yard line, tripped up by Solomon Elamimian, the middle linebacker and leading tackler for the Warriors. The task for Greg McMacken, the defensive coordinator for Hawaii, is to try to find a way to control this Georgia running game. Very difficult because they don't get to work against it in practice. They're going against their run and shoot deep offense, and that's not the same thing. Not even close. Hard for them to replicate it, so they have to almost do it on the run each ball game. McMacken in his second go round as defensive coordinator in Hawaii, and Brown still on his feet inside the 40 to the 37 yard line. A pickup of 21 for Thomas Brown playing in his final game as a Bulldog tonight. Nothing like a big isolation play, and look at the big guys. Two fullbacks in the backfield number 49, Sean Chappis, and number 36, Brandon Sutherland, in tandem with a big offensive line. And once again, against a loaded box, a missed tackle there by number 24, Desmond Thomas. Another one by number 27, Ryan Mouton. Stafford play action, rolls right, throws to his tight end, Chandler, and he's to the 25-yard line. Another Georgia first down. Like what Mike Bobo, the offensive coordinator, has going for Georgia tonight. Opened up the first series of the game actually throwing the football. When everyone thought, oh, the run game for Georgia. Well, he threw the ball to try and loosen Hawaii up a little bit and to let them know that they will not be stereotyped in their play calling. Now, after some big runs on first and 10, he threw the ball again. They pitch it to Brown. And a nice play charging from the far side made by Blaine Sorez. He was hurt a great deal this season, but finished the year a strong game against Washington. That's just terrific backside pursuit by Blaze Sorez. Coming from his outside linebacker position, just ran the play down from the backside. Expected to be a starter going into the season. Had a number of injuries. Shoulder, hamstring that held him back. But he did finish strong against Washington with seven tackles. Stafford out of shotgun inside handoff to Brown. And Adam Leonard steps up to make the hit. Maybe a yard. A wise defense. Led by their leading tackler, we mentioned Solomon Elamimian. Up front, number 94, keep an eye on him. David Vekune, seven and a half sacks. And we just mentioned the name Adam Leonard. Four interceptions returned, two of them this year for touchdowns. A defense that has made remarkable, staggering improvement. 
in each of the last four years, but especially from last year to this year. Stafford dumps it off to Marino, spins out of a couple of tackles, and bangs his way to the 10 first down dogs. So now you've got Brown and Moreno in the game. Now watch what they do. They swing Brown number 20, let the pursuit bypass, and dump it inside to Moreno. Now he gets Velasco 75 out front. 67 Chester Big Cheese Adams. And he gets all the way to the third level for a big pickup for the Bulldogs. I love the misdirection there for Mike Bobo. Something you thought they might do very early in the game. Use it against the emotion of the defense of Hawaii. Have them overcommit, hit them inside. Reno will get it again. It's into the end zone for the second time tonight. a very strong chance and before his four years are over at the University of Georgia that Marino is going to strike up glory glory hallelujah more than any player in Bulldogs history <laughs> Herschel Walker notwithstanding so far one of the great fears for Hawaii was being able to not slow down this Georgia running attack and already the Bulldogs have rushed for almost 90 yards in the opening quarter. They're dominating the defensive front of Hawaii. It doesn't matter whether they're seven, eight, nine, or ten in the box. Georgia's having their way with Hawaii right now in the run game. Good kick by Bailey sending a lane back to his three. And covered beautifully. DeMarcus Dobbs, the first man down the field. Of course, the Bulldogs know all about the All-State Sugar Bowl. They're first in 1947 against North Carolina. Georgia's legendary Charlie Trippy played all 60 minutes. Offense, defense, special teams. The 67-yard touchdown pass gave the Bulldogs a 13-10 lead. They would not relinquish a 20-10 victory over the Tar Heels of North Carolina. A lot of discussion at Georgia about the greatest player ever. Most people would say Herschel Walker, but many people back there would say Charlie Trippi. So we look at Georgia's nine appearances here in the All-State Sugar Bowl. Of course, two years ago, they were in the Sugar Bowl, but they had to play back in New Orleans because of Katrina. Atlanta. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's Atlanta. Carry out to the 21 by Kealoa Pilares. He is their leading rusher. And he has a total of 362 yards. Now, Hawaii's running backs combined have just carried 119 times, easily the fewest in Division I football, the FBS. But when they're called upon, five and a half yards per carry. And that's because the pass game opens things up so well. And for Hawaii, a lot of their runs are screens to the wide receivers and the backs, as well as the yards after the catch by the wide receivers. That's what they think generates their run game. Brennan in trouble, and down he goes. Marcus Howard got it. Brennan with zero time to throw. That's the way the opening quarter comes to an end. The All-State Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, Louisiana. Georgia in front, 
back at the BCS Allstate Sugar Bowl in the Louisiana Superdome Georgia leading Hawaii 14 to 3 and frustration for Hawaii Myra Newberry defensive back pulling his helmet off on that last series yelling at his defensive teammates saying if you're scared get back on the bus meanwhile June Jones talking to Jason Rivers after that personal foul that stopped the drive and led to a field goal and said you can play with emotion but that kind we don't need back to Tom Brenneman and Charles Davis. Chris Myers thank you very much set to begin the second quarter certainly an opening quarter all in favor of the Georgia Bulldogs third and 14 for Hawaii from its own 11. Keep an eye on the edge rushers for Georgia with no tight ends they usually have a free release towards the quarterback. Brennan being chased lays it off for Polares with a very short game and the Rainbow Warriors forced to put it away. If you're Willie Martinez, the defensive coordinator, you're loving what you're seeing right now because the pressure is coming from these guys. They've got the free shot towards the quarterback. No one chipping off of them. And you're only needing to commit four to your pass rush to drop your seven into coverage. And that's working quite well for Georgia so far. Thomas Flowers dropping back to field the punt. You may remember early in the game, Mikey Henderson took a lick that has forced him to the sidelines. Unbelievable Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, the thrilling Boise State win. Sutherland, his first carry, and picks up a yard. I really think this is a very important defensive series for Hawaii. Notwithstanding Myron Newberry's tantrum on the sidelines, yelling at his players, yelling at his teammates, Hawaii needs to show a little stoutness against Georgia. Right now, Georgia's had their way. The run game, thrown the ball when they felt like it. I know it's 14 to 3. Hawaii has been comfortable coming from behind. This is a little bit different animal they're playing tonight in the Georgia Bulldogs. They can't afford to get way down in this game. Michael Lafaelli, number 67, just ran through Fernando Velasco. Georgia seems to be excited about what's going, coming from the official. Dead ball, offside by contact, by the defense, five yard penalty, remains second down. Five penalties in a game now against Hawaii. They average a little bit less than seven per game all season. Understand some of the nerves, some of the emotion, but they've got to settle in and start playing with the confidence that June Jones was trying to put, you know, give them before the ball game. Three backs, and they hand it off to Brown, and Ella Mimian steps right into the hole and slams into the turf. Ella Mimian, first team all whack performer at middle linebacker. Sorry about that, Tom. That's exactly what Hawaii needed. Just the, the hit from Ella Mimian. He had a number of teammates swarming with him. I saw Carl Noah, number 12, a couple of others. Big third and short for Georgia. Third and two, they give it to the fullback, and Sutherland looks to have the first down to the Hawaii 44 yard line. Heavy formation, what a lot of teams call jumbo or big. A couple of tight ends on the field. Like Bruce Figgins, number 89. Tight end helped prominently on that play. Notice how Georgia huddles almost on the ball. Just turns right around and ready to go, almost an attack huddle. As soon as they come out, they're up on the line of scrimmage, ready to get after. Short drop by Stafford. That throw is too high for Michael Moore, the intended receiver. Second and ten. Stafford very fortunate on that play because the coverage was excellent by number 27, Ryan Mouton, and number three, My Myra Newberry, backing up his words with action on that play. Probably good that Stafford was high and away because if the ball's down a little bit, 
Great opportunity for Hawaii to get their hands on it. Thomas Brown, the lead blocker is Sutherland. Hard hit down at the 35 yard line, made by Eric Robinson. Another third and short of coming for the Bulldogs. Nice hit by Robinson. The downside, though, is this nine yards downfield on a second and ten. Left side of the line, just zone blocking. Sturdivant at 77, handles his guy at the front, allows Brown to get downfield. Great job. By number 89, Bruce Figgins, the tight end controlling the line of scrimmage. Two tight ends out of the I formation. Nearly lost the handle on the snap. And very close to another first down. It looks like Brown got there. I mean, you're getting a look at why Georgia is so tough to defense against a run. I mean, you go back to the Levince Dooley dogs of the 1980s, and since the decade turned to the 90s, and now the next millennium, the second best rushing season this year for Georgia. Kind of in reverse of what they had done with Mark Richt, who came with the identity of a guy who liked to, likes to throw the football, but he knew that this year his playmakers were his running backs coupled with a young offensive line, so he kept it simple for the dogs this year. Down from the shotgun. Stafford all day to throw it. And too high for Bryant, his intended target at the goal line. Not to be confused with a no shot Moreno. Very well put, young man. <laughs> Same type of pickup, though, I'll bet. The no shot is back in there. They fake the handoff to him. Flag comes down. This will be a hold against Georgia. It looks like they got Chris Davis, a red shirt freshman. Georgia was lobbying for a late hit on Matt's Matthew Stafford going over the sideline. Holding number 63 on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. It's Chris Davis, the red shirt freshman. All-American guard. Mark Richt is telling his guys, if we look at the penalty situation, why it was five, Georgia with three. He's telling the officials, just keep an eye on my quarterback. You know, let's make sure he gets protected, too. Got you on the hold. Okay, we did it. But don't let my guy get a free shot over the sideline. Well, they back him up all the way to the 44 of Hawaii. Second and 20 for Georgia. And not necessarily a throwing down for the Bulldogs. Another penalty, this one on the left tackle, Sturdivant. Full start, number 77 on the offense, five-yard penalty, remains second down. Not only Sturdivant, as Charles brought up earlier, a National Honor Society student and a 4.1 grade point average, he was also his student council body president. Of course, and again, when you're that big, who's going to vote against That's you? That's what I was about to say. It would be, forget stuffing the ballot box. <laughs> I'm guessing he ran unopposed. Well, he's bigger than the ballot box. <laughs> he just said, I, I want to be student by you. You got it. It's yours. Moreno looking for somewhere to run. Grabbing him from behind, Delamimian, along with help from Amani Purcell. Purcell number 54, recruited by Penn State out of the American Samoan Islands. Went to Penn State, had a change of heart, came back to play at Hawaii. His brother played here at Hawaii, now in the NFL with the Cleveland Browns. Came home because his mom was ill, his father's in the military, he's actually in Iraq fighting suffered an injury and came home for surgery and he thought I need to be home closer to my family.
third and 24 all out blitz coming the screen to Marino gets one block but is tackled at the 35 yard line this would be a 52 yard field goal try should they send Katu out there his long this season is 47 and they're going to take a chance at a field goal and Katu is coming off of a pulled hamstring suffered in the Georgia Tech game their last game of the season I talked with him in practice the other day I said how are you feeling are you 100 percent healthy and he said yes I am so we're going to find out now because they're going to stretch it out on his first attempt well his career long is 58 he's got plenty of left this one is hammered way back well Brandon Katu who hit on 19 of 21 during the regular season says 52 yards nothing to it pulled hamstring totally healed. That looks like going back to the days of Kevin Butler. Seventeen three Bulldogs. We invite you to join the live All-State Sugar Bowl play calling competition now. Predict plays before the snap for your chance to win. Text BCS to 386 from your AT&T wireless phone exclusively from AT&T. Or you can play now at at and Blue Room. Dot com. Ugga the sixth. An 86 and 27 record. Hey, they all, they keep records on all of the Uggas. And you know when they go <laughs> on to their greater reward, do you know where they're placed? Inside of Sanford Stadium, inside of a tunnel, each has his own crypt with his name, his record, and a nice little passage. Let's hope that's a long time away. At the 10 yard line, Malcolm Lane up to the 27. Now, there have been a number of games, in fact, their most recent game where Hawaii fell behind and fell behind big 21 0 to Washington. Now, Washington's a different animal entirely than the Georgia Bulldogs, but this Hawaii team is not going to get real uptight because they trail 17 to 3 with 930 to play until halftime right June Jones cited that to us when we talked with him and not so much the Washington game Alabama when they went on the road and played them a couple of seasons ago he said we didn't play well at all we acted like we were wondering whether we should have been there by the time we settled in and made it a game it was too late that's what he was telling his players before the game show that we belong early but they are comfortable coming from behind Brennan steps up and throws. It's intercepted. Prince Miller, his first pick of the season, and the first one thrown tonight by Colt Brennan. Willie Martinez, the defensive coordinator for Georgia, has to be ecstatic right now because watch the pressure up front. It's just a three man rush. That means he has eight guys committed downfield to cover. And the three man rush put pressure in Colt Brennan's face. Georgia thus far in this all state Sugar Bowl 17 to 3 925 until halftime and after the interception thrown by Brennan the Bulldogs get it at the Hawaii 42 Stafford to throw and looking down the field for Bailey he caught it but he's out of bounds and then it sprung loose at the end anyway Mike Bobo had great field position decided to try and take a shot downfield since the run game has been so established in this situation if I'm Georgia I'm thinking about continuing to dominate the game running the football they're controlling the clock they're limiting the number of possessions that Hawaii has the ball and keeps Colt Brennan on the on the bench Hawaii averages 15 possessions per year per, per ball game and look so far Georgia dominating time of possession which is exactly what they want plus is paying off in points they have 17. Pitch to Thomas Brown. And he is tackled at the 40 yard line by Jacob Patek, the senior out of Victoria, Texas.
Jacob Patek to the left, number 31. Look at the job he does, stoning the block by Sean Chappis, number 49, and then falling inside and making the tackle. Six foot, right around 200 pounds, out of Texas, has really embraced the Polynesian culture, was wearing the Lava Lava, the skirt-type outfit that Hawaiian players uh, tend, tend, to, tend to like to wear off the field. A big third down here. And they set up the wide receiver screen to Durham. What a call. And still on his feet is Durham inside the 15. Ball comes loose. And who's got it? Is it Hawaii with a football waiting on an official signal? The ball was stripped from behind after the big game. Purcell tracking Durham at the 15-yard line. And now this Pac-10 officiating crew will get together to figure out who has the ball and where they have it. The ball was fumbled forward and out of bounds. It was recovered out of bounds. Georgia retains possession of the spot and fumble. First and goal. There you have it. And Chris Durham is the biggest sigh of relief in the place. They ended up catching Hawaii in a blitz. But look at the end of the play as Durham's running. Ball's in the inside arm. Great hustle. Downfield, stripping the football by number 54, Amani Purcell. Unfortunately for he and his teammates, the ball fumbled. The fumble ended up going out of bounds. See Purcell, the defensive lineman, great hustle. Ball falls off of him. No one's possessing it. No one, number 12, trying to get to it, but it goes out of bounds, and Georgia retains possession. Twenty-one seconds. Thank you. I want to reset the clock? Tack on five seconds to eight twenty-one. Who would have thought that at this stage of the game, Georgia would have more yards passing than Hawaii? A very balanced offense thus far for Mark Rick and his Bulldogs. As Georgia offense on averages two hundred yards in the air per game, Hawaii four hundred and fifty per game. Pump fake to the end zone. Touchdown, Bailey. Georgia Bulldogs, winners of their final six games during the regular season, finished in a tie with Tennessee in the Eastern Division of the SEC. But Tennessee beat them during the year, thus the tiebreaker to the championship. They feel like they're playing as well as anybody in the country. And so far in this All-State Sugar Bowl, lights out for the Bulldogs, 24-3 leaders. Twenty-four three, Georgia in front. Eight minutes to play until halftime. Let's go to the Fox jumper scope. Back to the interception by Brennan. Willie, Willie Martinez, the defense corner, loves this rush three. Number fifty-five, Jeremy Lomax puts pressure on drop eight, and look at how they have the receivers blanketed downfield, leading to the interception by number twenty-three, Prince Miller. Then earlier in the game, Georgia scored a touchdown against ten in the box of Hawaii, running the ball this time. They choose to go to the one-on-one -on -one route outside. Nice stop and go route by Sean Bailey. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Well, eight minutes to play until halftime. We've talked about how Hawaii has come back frequently this season, or at least a handful of times. 24 to 3 tells you they need a touchdown real soon. Real soon. Ryan Bouton from the seven yard line and brings it out to the 23. Ryan Mouton returning the kickoff tells you how important this series is. June Jones told us he wouldn't return kicks until the second half of this game because he was worried about wearing him out on defense early in the contest. Down 24 to 3. 
Those thoughts go out the window. They needed a big play. They tried to get it from Ryan Mouton. Four possessions for Hawaii. Three and out, first possession. Field goal, second possession. Punt, third possession. Interception, fourth position. See if Georgia continues to rush three and four men and continue to drop seven and eight into coverage. Brennan flush out of the pocket again. Slings it out to Rivers, who escapes one tackle. And he is slammed to the turf of the 35-yard line. He might be hurt. That's Donnell Ellerby, their leading tackler, that came full speed from the other side of the field to hit Jason Rivers. He took a big hit when he cut, cut, cut back inside. Hawaii receiver Jason Rivers injured on that last play, getting up, moving to the Hawaii sideline. It's been a physical game. Senior Mikey Henderson, number 27, the regular punt returner. As fans here, Hawaii fans, cheer Jason Rivers. Mikey Henderson knocked out of the game with a concussion, his first attempt on a return. This is his final game as a Georgia Bulldog player, telling me he's moving on to a different co career in computers and maybe working with athletes and academics, was emotional about approaching his last college game, a part of Georgia football, and said it helped him establish his, uh, his personal life and things he can do. And Mikey Henderson said he also saw the Boise State game last year and got the idea from Ian Johnson. Mikey proposed to his fiance senior day when Georgia played Kentucky, and now his future wife is here watching him in his final game. Chris, thank you. And speaking of marriage, Jason Rivers just got married during the recent Christmas break. That's His right. wife with him on this trip to the All-State Sugar Bowl. Rachel. Wide open, and a catch is made at midfield by Greg Salas as he is shoved out of bounds. And a penalty flag apparently came in. So we'll wait to hear again from our referee Brian O'Kane. An eligible receiver downfield on the offense, number seven. He was covered on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty, replay first down. That's just an alignment error by the Hawaii receivers. And you wonder if they're just a little bit rattled right now. Talk about the Hawaii football team down 24 to 3. So much that they wanted to try to prove tonight and still plenty of time to do it. That was their sixth penalty of the game. They average a little bit more than six penalties per game. That's it, less than seven. They're already at their limit. Someone just lined up incorrectly and made someone ineligible. Salas caught three balls the entire year. They used pretty much their four primary receivers catching passes for Cole Brennan this season. That one batted. Looked like it was tipped to the line of scrimmage and then dropped by Devon Best, second down and 15 for Hawaii. And the whole strategy for William Martinez coming into this game was to rotate guys in and out of the ball game to keep them fresh on defense for Georgia. He wanted to rush three, wanted to rush four, occasionally five guys, but he wanted to play more coverage and show different looks and try and disguise and confuse Colt Brennan. Because the rush is getting to Colt Brennan, he doesn't have the same amount of time to look downfield. That's why Georgia's defense has been so tough in the first half. Handed off to Polares, and he has good running room out across the 40 to the 41 yard line. That'll bring up third and five for the Warriors. They were down Washington, really. That was twice in the Washington game they were down 21 before they ultimately came back and won the game. A scintillating game from Cole Brennan, especially in the second half. 42 of 50, throwing the football in that game for 442 yards and five touchdowns. And no interception. No interception, but he had 20 in a row at one point in the second half. The Warriors need badly. This conversion not going to happen. The ball is loose and Georgia has recovered again. Marcus Howard made the strip. Brandon Miller got on top of it. 
the pressure again was not a blitz. Just Georgia coming off the edge. When a team does not have a tight end, watch the pressure from the top of your screen. Beating Steinhoff, number 78, when he had to spin back inside. And once he spun, and then there's Brandon Miller, number 12, getting on the football. Yeah, the emotion that my defense killing off a turnover in positive field position for the Bulldogs. Brennan fires to Rivers, who's back into the game. That'll be close to a four-yard pickup. Let's check in again with Chris Myers. Tom Rivers is back in after they uh, they gave him the concussion check and according to the sideline he just got his bell rung so obviously he's okay to continue meanwhile the Georgia defense without junior linebacker Marcus Washington number 44 he's twisted his ankle to evaluate him at halftime so Donnell Ellerby will carry the load at linebacker for Georgia and also getting a little playing time he saw number 50 Daryl Gamble infrequently frequently used during the season Brennan under heavy pressure yet again the first man there, Brandon Miller, but he wasn't alone. Well, William Martinez did something a little different on this one, and Cole Brennan comes up limping, which is a sight no one for Hawaii wants to see. He's had a bad ankle all year long, had the concussion against Fresno State, missed most of the Nevada game before coming back and finishing the year against Boise State and Washington. But William Martinez changed up a little bit. He rushed five that time. <laughs> you know, he's been three and four and getting pressure. Changed up. Now he's rushing five. And deep, deep, deep are his defensive backs right now. They want everything in front. And they want to come up and make the tackle on the play. Third and 16. High snap. Brennan hangs with it. Throws to Bess. And right there to make a sure tackle is Asher Allen. Fourth down and eight. And on comes the punting unit for Hawaii. How great was that for Georgia? Remember, yards after catch is a big part of Hawaii's attack. They say that's up for them, it's almost like a running game. How many yards the receivers make? Asher Allen on that play gave up zero yards after the catch to Devon Bess. I mean, for Hawaii, that's anemic for Hawaii. They, can, they don't even understand that number of just 19. If you had told them that before the game, no way they would have believed you. They think they can juke and shake with the best of them. Russell, a very short punt. We'll bounce at the 31 and now take a couple of hops to the 25. A flag comes in. A lot of jawing going on. Number 10, Timo Piapele, and there you get a look. Whistled for an infraction already in the game is number 29, Keenan Jones, when he put that hit that knocked Mikey Henderson out of his final game of his college career. Holding by number 23 on the return team. Penalty will be enforced 10 yards from the end of the kick. First down. Prince Miller working against Keenan Jones, the gunner. Knocks the lid off. Oh, he got a whole lot of cloth on that one. Yeah, you talk about your hands are supposed to stay inside. And not <laughs> that was pretty easy for the officials. And now, of course, a little filibuster emerges from each side. Well, there was. A lot of that, in fact, there was too much of that going on earlier today in uh, that matchup of the defending national champion Florida Gators and the Michigan Wolverines. Final game for Lloyd Carr. Congratulations to him. Now, Hawaii's M.O. has not been to go after the football. They have so much confidence in their offense that they've just been a return team under June Jones. Here would be a prime time to try and go after and block a punt and try and change momentum, but that is not what Hawaii normally does. First punt of the night for Brian Mims, and it's a good one. Devon Best from his own 35-yard line, flag comes down. Best still on his feet. Out to the 43, but we'll wait on the flag. Been a lot of those in a game tonight. And Keenan Jones needs to get a new helmet, because it's off again. Helmet, or at least chin strap, something that's going to hold that lid on.
with a 12 penalty. Number 29 on the return team. 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. For young Mr. Jones, needs a little more action, a little less chatter right now. Just go, just go play. I understand the emotion of the game, but just go play right now. Hawaii has one timeout left. 19 seconds remain until halftime. And now they'll march off the penalty. They would have had the ball at the 43 yard line, and now it goes all the way back to the 25. Now, what if they'd had it at the 43 with more time on the clock? Yep. The trade off of taking the timeout is field position, probably. Well, I, might be, to, I might be off a second or two, Charles. When I, I go back to that last series, if they call a timeout after three straight running plays, they'd have a minute, a minute 20 left right now until halftime. Brennan steps up, guns it to Rivers out to the 45-yard line. The clock will stop in the college game until they get back to the line of scrimmage and reset the ball. So you're either coming up and you either have something ready to go or you spike it to stop the clock to set out, set up second down. They're getting a break here because the official's still over the ball and Hawaii's already set. Well, the whistle clock starts. And Brennan is caught from Rennie Curran. What a great play. Hawaii uses its final timeout. The pressure has been relentless all night on Colt Brennan. Right there, Marcus Howard gets to him and drops him. Now he has to try and step up again. Tripped up from behind, still takes the big hit from Jeremy Lomax. And then again, there's Mr. Howard, number 38, knocking the ball free. Brandon Miller, 12. And on the last play, Roderick Battle, number 41, flushed him right into number 35, Rennie Curran. Look at those numbers. Just the way George has played down the stretch. A big reason why they've won their last six coming into tonight. Well, they only had 34 sacks the entire season. And then got the 22 in the final four and a half games. That'll be the final play of the half for Cole Brennan and the Hawaii Warriors. Time to regroup because the Georgia Bulldogs have just completely shut down the highest scoring team in all of college football. Held them to three points. Let's go downstairs to Chris Myers. Georgia dominated college football's only unbeaten team, Tom, with Coach Mark Rick. And, uh, Mark, I guess one of the storylines is the way you've defensed Colt Brennan. How have you been able to do it? Well, our guys are just playing really hard. We've got a lot of depth right now. Just about everybody's healthy. We're rolling a lot of fresh people in there and just getting after it right now. With the lead you have and they're capable of coming back, That's what right. do you tell your team at, at halftime so they keep the edge? We tell them don't look at the scoreboard. You can look at the clock, but not the score. you got to play hard. Every down, no matter what, till it, till it strikes 0-0. Zero, zero. All right, we'll see you in the second half. Thanks, Coach Mark Richt. And let's go now to the halftime show and Chris Rhodes. Chris, uh, Goliath keeping David at arm's length. No doubt about that one, Chris. Thank you very much. Coming up next on the Southwest Airlines halftime show, Jimmy Johnson and Fran Tarkson rejoin me for their first half analysis and tell us how in the world Hawaii can get back into this game. Plus, we are going to strike up the band. Make that both bands from the University of Georgia and the University of Hawaii. So far, it is all Bulldogs keeping the nation's leading scoring team to three points. 24 to three. Halftime show coming your way from the All-State Sugar Bowl after this. Our Taco Bell impact players of the game thus far. Matthew Stafford, 9 of 16 with a touchdown pass. Marino's only carried five times, but two of those carries resulting in touchdowns. So here come the Warriors, trailing 24 to 3, just underway. A minute and two seconds into the third quarter. A long, long way to go. Don't count them out quite yet. Down goes Brennan yet again. The sixth time Georgia has sacked 
Cole Brennan, and he had been sacked less than 30 times this season in over 600 pass attempts. The hard part tonight are the tackles for Hawaii. That's Keith Asun, number 62. And when I talked with a number of coaches who have played against Hawaii, they all said the same thing. You can attack off the edge at the tackle position, but you've got to have the men back deep who can play coverage. Georgia has all of those elements. That's why the pressure is able to get to Cole Brennan. Brennan lets it fly to Bryce Mullen. He spins away from one tackle. And it's chopped down again. Let's send it downstairs to Chris Meyer. Tom, number team has a water boy, but Georgia has a water wife. Mark Rick's wife, Catherine, got tired of just cheering from the stands and I want to help. So she's become, in essence, the water boy, being joined by a couple of their sons. They have four children for this game today. And Mark Rick said that she actually works. She shows up four to five hours early with the trainers and gets ready. And there's no husband and wife talk during the game, but they do get into it a little bit after games discussing strategy. <laughs> Great stuff. I think it tells you that shot we saw of Catherine. And it tells you all you need to know about her and her husband and her family. She's down there pouring water for the players in the biggest game they played this year. Brennan, was it intercepted or was it trapped? They're saying interception. Second of a night thrown by Cole Brennan. Asher Allen, the defensive back. And, and notice where the ball is. Coming into this game, Colt Brennan is nearly a 71% completion percentage quarterback. That's one of the more inaccurate throws you'll ever see Colt Brennan make. The only person who has a chance at this football is Asher Allen. That's very unusual coming from the Hawaii offense and Colt Brennan. The pressure is there consistently in his face, makes the coverage that much tougher. And again, a huge, huge stand now for Hawaii's defense because you know Georgia wants to run the football and run clock. Moreno back into the game. Slow down and still finds a hole, a small crease, and that's all Noshan needs to carry to the 33-yard line. Still doesn't take him long to get off the ground, does it, Tom? No. Doesn't matter how many people knock him down. He ended up forcing Myron Newberry to miss on that play. He gained extra yardage. But if I'm Mike Bobo, the offense coordinator at Georgia, I know controlling the clock is a big deal. But right now, you've got Hawaii so loaded up selling out against the run that I think the pass game is there for Georgia if they choose to take it. Stay on the ground for the time being. And again, Moreno inside the 30 needed to get to the 27 for a first down and that will depend upon the spot. I know people always want to compare Noshaw Moreno with Herschel Walker right now because of his exploits here as a freshman. But they go about their business a little bit differently. Did you see that last move that Noshaw Moreno just made? The last two plays he's made people miss and gotten downfield. Herschel was somewhat elusive, but he was much more of a power and speed guy, would run away from you as well as run over you. Moreno running through would be tacklers and down to the 15. Well, you look at the great names in the history of the SEC as freshman Herschel, the all-time leader in 1980, led him to a national championship 1,600 yards. Your alma mater, Tennessee, back in 1996. Emmett Smith and 87 with the Gators. And now Marino, the fourth leading freshman tailback in Southeastern Conference history, and it spans 75 years. That is some list, isn't it? To be number four on that list behind three guys who've had tremendous careers post-college. Timeout on the field. 24-3 Georgia knocking on the door again. This is Major Russ Black coming from Iraq. This shout out goes to my Uncle Bob, the biggest, greatest Georgia fan in all the world. Lead him to victory, Uncle Bob. Go dogs! Sick him! Hoo, 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 hoo! <laughs> cool again. Cool again. Cool again. Great stuff. Stay well, Sergeant Black. Yes. Look as a movie star, too. Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Had a little roll. Exactly right. 
First down for the Gators. Opening minutes of just the third quarter, and Marino already with a couple of touchdown runs in the game tonight. He is bottled after a three-yard pickup to the 11. And so many times we come out of a half and we talk about halftime adjustments that, team, that teams have to make. For Georgia, there were no adjustments other than what Mark Rick told our Chris Myers going in at the half. Quit looking at the scoreboard. And look at the clock, but not the score. Continue to play hard. Do what you're doing. Because Willie Martinez's defense doesn't have to make any adjustments yet. It's still working for them. Offensively, again, no adjustments. The line's still controlling things here to start the second half. Second and seven, play action fake, ball tipped in the air, and is it intercepted by Patek? Yes. First turnover of the game for the Bulldogs. To say they needed that turnaround is the understatement of the night. I know the Georgia fans are thinking, we've run the ball so well, why are we throwing it? But this is a nice play in the middle. Looks like Adam Leonard tipping it up for the interception. After the tip ball and the interception, Hawaii starts its second drive of the second half inside its own five-yard line. Brennan lays it off to Polares out of the backfield, and he picks up maybe three. Georgia is so quick on the defensive with their defensive ends that they actually initially took away the pass pattern that was completed. Jarius Wynn, number 99, off the edge, rushing the passer, actually took a step inside to take away the initial look by Brennan. He had to come outside to get the ball to Polaris. Well, Georgia has littered the NFL with defensive players over the last five seasons under Mark Rick. Brennan, incomplete off the hands of Devon Bess. This defense has six first-time starters this season, allowed 21 points per game. A defense a year ago sent seven players to the NFL, and over the last six years, 29 Bulldog defensive players have moved on to the next level. That is staggering. We well, you know one of their favorite expressions in Athens is, tradition never graduates. So when everyone was worried about their defense this year, as we see Trenton Sturdivant, the starting offensive tackle, walking off, Everyone was wondering how they would play this year. Well, the Georgia Bulldogs defense answered that question, and Hawaii still 0 for the night on third down. Lennon throws to Hawthorne, and he is wrapped up. No yards after the catch. But did he get enough for a first down? It is very close. It is a first down. Just enough. Yards after catch. The last time this graphic was posted, it was 19 yards after a catch. Now they got one more, and they barely got enough after the catch there to Hawthorne for that to go, for, the, for, for that to work. Missed tackles for Hawaii, 14, Georgia won. That is a phenomenal job of tackling by Georgia against one of the better offenses in America. They're coming after Brennan, and the ball is tipped again at the line of scrimmage. I mean, the pocket, whatever pocket there has been, has just completely collapsed. Almost as soon as Brennan is catching the ball out of the shotgun. And with Hawaii, watch, there's not much retreat from the offensive line. They try and catch you on the line of scrimmage because they know that the ball is going to be get. They, they know that Brennan will get rid of the ball quickly. But Georgia's rush is getting there so fast that it's actually eating up that time that Colt Brennan normally has. That's, I mean, that's fast because Colt Brennan has one of the better releases in the country. The ball's out of his hands, and Georgia's still getting pressure in his face. Low snap, nice play by Brennan. Plenty of time this time. And after going through the hands of Brian Evans, it hit Jason Rivers right in the face. Ryan Evans did just enough to dis distract Jason Rivers. You know, I mean, ball should have been picked off. But there's Willie Martinez, the defensive coordinator. He played college football for someone we know pretty well, a man by the name of Jimmy Johnson, the University of Miami. And right now, Willie Martinez is coaching the game of his life this evening. His plan being executed nearly to perfection by his Georgia Bulldogs. 
Third down and 10 for Hawaii. Look out. Ball is loose. Scramble for the football in the end zone. And they're saying touchdown Georgia. Shake it up. Marcus Howard had a clean shot on Brennan, who had no idea he was coming. And all night long, Willie Martinez has rushed three and four. Well, this time he brought six. And Marcus Howard gets inside of Keone Steinhoff. Free rush to the quarterback, knocks it free. Touchdown, Georgia. And Hawaii can only hope that Pope Brennan's wrist is okay. Came off seeming to hold it. Trying to take a look at actually who covered it up and was awarded the touchdown. Looked like Howard delivered the hit. That may have come down on top of it. Brennan flexing that right hand. Here's the hit. We know that's Marcus Howard. It's a touchdown for Georgia. Pressure, pressure, pressure all night. Howard with the sack and the touchdown. He's been off the edge all night, but look here. Look at Howard, number 38. He sets up. Steinhoff fakes outside, comes inside, knocks the ball free, and he gets credit for the recovery and touchdown in the end zone. I tell you what, Mr. Howard is uh, putting himself in heavy consideration for the MVP of this game. He has three sacks and now a touchdown. And in the pressure on Brennan, seven sacks has really been the least of it. Not 10 knockdowns, 11 pressures. And how about this one? Marcus Howard, his first starting assignment came this year, his senior year. 37 games in his career before he gets his first start as a senior. Coming back across the 30, out to the 35, the 40, and all the way to midfield is Ryan Mouton, but flags are all over the place. They're at the 30, they're at the 45, and they're at the other 45. So we may have to ice down some elbows of some officials, huh? Way they're flinging around the laundry. Yeah, you're not lying. It's 13, now 14 of them tonight. Holding, number 59 on the return team. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Let's check in downstairs with Chris Myers. Tom, one of the reasons, uh, Charles, that one of the reasons that Marcus Howard had to wait to get that chance to start for Georgia, he played behind guys like Quinton Moses and Charles Johnson, who were both in the NFL. And after yesterday's walkthrough, he told me, we know how good Colt Brennan is. We may not get to him, but if at least we make him feel uncomfortable, we feel like we can win the game. Well, so far, Marcus Howard, the Georgia defense, they've done a lot more than that. <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> We're well beyond that, Chris, for, Mar for Colt Brennan. First down from their own 10 after the penalty. And thrown behind Jason Rivers, and you couldn't blame if Brennan heard the footsteps. I mean, he took a lick the last time he dropped back on that sack and touchdown for Marcus Howard. One of the antidotes for all the pressure that Georgia is giving them, draws, screens, stuff that you can try and get them past them. You haven't seen a whole lot of that. The pressure's there so quickly. Another antidote is throwing the ball downfield to back off the pressure, back off the defensive backs. But they've had no time to deliver the ball downfield on longer routes. Throw and again just off the mark. CJ Hawthorne there. Heavy pressure again this time from Brandon Miller. They are well coached in the defensive line is Georgia. If we look at the numbers Colt Brennan's put up, the biggest one being sacked seven times. Rodney Garner is the defensive line coach and their recruiting coordinator, one of the better ones in the country. But he's also a terrific football coach. Sometimes you get known as a recruiter, people yep. forget you can coach guys up. Tonight is a testament to his coaching because most of the pressure has come from his defensive line. Even if they don't get the sack, they get their hands up in the passing lane as they did on the last play. 
Blake clock expired. Did they get off a timeout? You saw Brennan signal for it. And they are awarded the timeout before the play clock expired. First one used in the second half by the Hawaii Warriors. 840 to go in the third. All Georgia. Third and ten for the Warriors, trailing the Bulldogs 31 to 3. Brennan is hit on 17 of 27 for just 131 yards without a touchdown. And two interceptions. Too high on the intended receiver, Devon Bess. And again, Brennan has to get off the ground. A flag is down on the play. Could be. They uh, we'll him. see. They got him for. They're gonna, it's going to be roughing Tom. A little over exuberant at the end. They've hit him so many times. They don't know how to go back there and not hit him anymore. And this was going to cost Roughing him. the passer, number 58 on the defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. Richard freshman Demarcus Dobbs. An excellent special teamer. Dobbs, he played very well, had a big tackle earlier tonight. That was one they just did not need. The drive was over. All the hits, all the sacks, all the pressure has started to make Colt Brennan inaccurate in throwing the football. See, that's pitch and catch for him. And for, you know, that wasn't even 58 dubs. It was Gamble, number 50. Yeah, you, you, you have two steps before you bump into him. Daryl Gamble really was the man who had, should have had the penalty against him, not number 58. But Brennan not getting his feet set, not delivering as accurately as he normally does downfield. It has taken a toll on him this evening. Tried a little shovel pass to Polaris, and like everything else tonight, read beautifully by the Georgia defense. You know, it's not to say they haven't had great coverage tonight, but they haven't needed great no. coverage tonight. I mean, Brennan just has no time to throw the ball. Tom, when I played at Tennessee, my best year covering people was my freshman year. You know why? They led the conference in sacks. Reggie White was playing <laughs> defensive line for us. So we were starting, I was a redshirt freshman, another guy was a redshirt, two, you know, two sophomores in the secondary, one who used to be a linebacker. Reggie White was the greatest thing to happen to a young secondary. Case in point tonight, whether they're young or not, this pressure has made the coverage that much more substantial. Well, now another penalty flag comes down before they even break the There is the no huddle. foul on the play for an illegal substitution. Hawaii called timeout. They're second of the half. Wow. Well, while Cole Brennan walks to the sideline, let's again check in on our sideline with Chris Meyer. And down on the Hawaiian sideline, more than 60% of the players are Polynesian or Samoan, Hawaiian. The first actual Hawaiian to play in the Sugar Bowl, Herman Wiedermember from St. Mary's College in California, nicknamed Squirman Herman, proud of the heritage and the Hawaiian flag. He scored a touchdown, a unanimous All-American, scored a touchdown in that Sugar Bowl game, was actually a Heisman Trophy finalist. Old Squirman Herman later appeared, Tom, in an episode of the TV show Hawaii 5 -0. Oh, one of the greats, Jack Lord, as I recall, <laughs> Mr. Myers. I have his hair. Hold a second. Chris, did they book him? <laughs> They did book him, Tom O and Charles O. Speaking of hair, quite a lot of interesting hairstyles on this field tonight. Including our very own Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> Chris, out of, out of the three of us, I think you're the only one who could approximate one of those hairstyles. Tom and I don't have enough left to go for it. I got plenty of gel. But, but how, about, <laughs> how about Squirman Herman Wiedermeyer? At St. Mary's College, many people won't remember St. Mary's used to be a football power. You should travel east and have big games against teams like Fordham. How about that? Against back when a certain man named Lombardi was one of the seven blocks of Brandon. Ooh. Second down and ten for the Warriors. Running out of the shotgun, a 31 to 3 Georgia lead. Catch made by Rivers. And he is tackled again immediately. Outstanding tackling when there have been completed passes tonight from the Georgia secondary. The average of holding them to three yards or less after catch is definitely being met by the Georgia secondary tonight. Because they knew if they gave up big yardage after the catch, they were in for a long evening. Because that's what Hawaii's offense is predicated on. Only one missed tackle tonight for Georgia. I wouldn't want to be that guy in the film room. That might be oh. the only thing they can say has gone wrong. <laughs> 
got to find a way to jump on someone, right? That's right. That'll come up right before spring practice to show what we need to do to improve, guys. Brennan, a completed pass and chopping down the big man again is Asher Allen. Jason Lyle Mahler out of the backfield, and that's a big tough. That's a lot of man right there. Limping off, we're trying to limp towards the sidelines. Man, that's his first catch of the year. Lyle Moley will head back to the sideline. Carry the ball from time to time. Right, but that's his first catch overall. You know the 15-yard the penalty for roughing the passer? It's the third longest play, I believe, tonight for Hawaii on offense. Who would have thought? Not us. And he is wrapped up and thrown to the ground by Daryl Gamble. He's a man getting playing time tonight after the injury to Marcus Washington in the opening minutes of the game. One good thing about having a young defense to start the year going into spring practice is that you get a lot of guys, a lot of reps. And William Martinez, the defense coordinator, told us sometimes just bite the bullet and throw guys out there to get them on the field so that if something goes wrong later and a guy's hurt and you have to play a guy, it's not his first time out there. And that's paid dividends tonight with guys like Gamble coming into this type of a situation. Only 130 yards of total offense for the Warriors. Catch made by Rivers, and he will be a little less than a yard, it appears, away from a first down. Danell Ellerby on the tackle, a full yard shot. Monday night, the big one. Matt Flynn and LSU ranked number two against number one Ohio State led by their All-American running back Chris Beanie Wells. The All-State BCS National Championship game Monday at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific in high definition only on Fox. My we kind of are ready for that. My kind of matchup right there. Can Ohio State run the football against the vaunted defense of LSU? Can LSU move it against Ohio State's top-ranked defense? Polares picks up the first down and then some down to the 45 yard line. I think you and I have been both very surprised at uh, I don't know if venom is the right word choice but there certainly has From been some quarters. something like that directed towards that Ohio State program this season. I mean it's not some Johnny come lately program. No denying they had a, a terrible game in the championship yes, game last year. It's a bad game. They've won seven national titles and along with USC have the best record in college football the last seven years. And what I don't I, I'm with you I don't understand just how hard people have come at Ohio State in the Big Ten because of that three year three times now they're going to play for the national crown in the last six years. I don't think that's a fluke. And there's Devon Bess and he's inside the 35 down to the 34 and it should be noted just FYI by the way in that SEC Big Ten debate thing. The Big Ten has a winning record over the SEC in bowl games in the last five years. Just FYI, maybe not the biggest one like we saw last year, but they have a winning record. Last 26 times going into this bowl season, I believe it was 13-13. Last eight games, it was 5-3 Big Ten. The problem was it was the biggest game yep. on the national stage, and it was a wipeout, and that's what lingers in the minds of most people. Ohio State has an opportunity to change that perception. Or LSU can reinforce it. Exactly. Either way you look at it. Polaris away from one tackler, away from a second tackler, cannot evade a third tackler, and that's Rashad Jones, a redshirt freshman from Atlanta. This overall speed for Georgia. Watch how they continue to run things down. It's a missed tackle by Wynn and another one, but they still spill it and have enough to have enough people to come up and make it a lost play. Rashad Jones getting credit for the final tackle. But but Polari showing some moves, and you know what he credits his moves to? Playing freeze tag as a youngster. Instead, Georgia froze him for the loss. Brennan looking down the field, an open receiver, perfect pass. No, they're saying he's out of bounds. They had a play there, and as it turned out, wide receiver out of bounds. Kind of the story of the night for Hawaii, even when they finally get one off. 
The end result is not what they wanted or expected. And Georgia continues to rotate defensive linemen in and out of the game to keep fresh legs coming at Colt Brennan. Well, Siave Septi fired up over on that far sideline, thinking they had made a connection. Here they come. And Bobble then intercepted. Again, Marcus Howard got a hand on it. Janelle Ellerby snatches it out of the air. Marcus Howard having a night to remember number 38. Hands in the passing lane, bobbles it, bobbles it, tips it. And Danelle Ellerby, the middle linebacker on the pursuit. Nothing like a great tip drill. If you're a defensive back, linebacker, ball stays in the air. And Georgia celebrating. Defense, the watchword. Is that Willie Martinez? Getting a deserved ride from Danelle Ellerby. I mean, this is this is Howard's the MVP I right mean, now. Charles. You get you got to mark him down, don't you? Because defense has been the story for Georgia tonight. Thomas Brown runs into his own man. And is thrown to the ground by Armani Purcell. Had help from Michael Lafayette. I do understand that Georgia wants the clock to run. They want to run the football in order to accomplish that. But Mike Bobo has done a nice job tonight of throwing on the early downs. I think he may want to consider that again to try and release a little bit of pressure that Hawaii is going to bring in the front. Because right now it's going to be difficult to run against so many men in the box. It's Mike Bobo all the way to the left in the baseball cap. Well, after this game tonight, Mike Bobo goes back to the real world. <laughs> Five kids. We'll talk more about that in a minute. <laughs> Under heavy pressure and a throw caught by Massaqua to the 37-yard line. Take a look at the Joker scope presented by Fox. So Colt Brennan looking downfield. Everyone's saying what's going on with him, but it appears that the route was run incorrectly. So we watch the receiver running inside. That's Ryan Grice Mullen. And the ball's thrown to the outside. That's one I said was inaccurate. Wide receiver inside. Colt throwing into another spot. Stafford on the reverse. This is Bryan inside the 30, down to the 18-yard line. First down, Georgia. Purcell runs him out of bounds. To finish that thought about the Mike Bobo, former great Bulldogs quarterback, now their offensive coordinator. He was the MVP of the 98 Outback Bowl. Five children under the age of three, including triplets. His wife is Laney. Think about that, folks. Congratulations, Mrs. Bobo. Were any of you blessed enough to be parents out there? <laughs> How about five of them under three years old? Remember when we asked him what First. happens when you walk in the door? He said, just five kids come rolling at me. You're here, take them. <laughs> Glad you're home, honey, but a nice call on the last play by Coach Bobo with the reverse to Bryant. Slant, and is it a touchdown? Yes, to Muhammad Massaqua. A bullet delivered by Stafford. And Brennan's been taking bullets. That was a big league throw, Tom. Fran Tarkenton talked about Stafford in the pregame show. When he talked about him having as much ability as any quarterback in the country. He said he had the best arm of any quarterback in the country. You can see why he made that evaluation with that throw. I think they're going to review this play. Probably looking at, I'm thinking they're looking at the spot Massaqua came down to determine where it's a touchdown or not. I believe the throw will be fine. Look at that laser shot. Look at this. Bam. Now, whether Massaqua was in the end zone or not, I think is the question. I mean, look at how he spins that one in there. And the catch, the catch, and his, his knees are down. Get all that. First, 
The receiver caught the ball, was down at the one yard line prior to breaking the goal line playing first and goal. But they, but Hawaii played all year long under the idea that one loss ended the dream. See, we're going national championship game with a combined three losses with teams because from those conferences, a loss doesn't end your dream. But coming out of the whack, one loss, any loss. So every week was an elimination game for them. That's a lot of pressure to carry around all year long. And I think that Hawaii handled it quite well. If there's any doubt about this call that you think, Tom, tailback carrying the ball behind the big line and the lead blocker. Be honest with you, I'm a little surprised at this point that uh, Mark Rick has not gotten Craig Lump coming Illegal in the substitution game. on the defense. 12 men on the field, not breaking the huddle and completing their substitution at the distance of the goal, remains first down. Well, he had him in for a kickoff return. He also got A.J. Bryant in, another senior who's been hurt, only played six games, and he carried on the reverse. I think he wants to get Brown a touchdown. I think, he, I think it would be nice for him to get one. Unlike Walter Payton not getting one in a Super Bowl, <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. Let's take care of Thomas Brown. He's been a good one. Or even Brandon Sutherland. Well, Sutherland's got another year. It's amazing for Brandon Sutherland. Last year, he led this team in scoring. First running, first fullback since Darren Sapp at the University of Georgia. This year's role was reduced with the emergence of Moreno, Brown being around, Lumpkin, of course, before he was dinged up. A lot of guys that qualify for the, hey, coach, can you take care of me yeah. category. Well, when you think that Lumpkin was the leading carrier in yards for the Bulldogs last year, was number one on the depth charts, and they get Thomas Brown the ball, and Thomas Brown dives into the end zone. So the senior who just earned his degree you talked about the 21 credit hours this last semester to earn his degree celebrates by leaping into the end zone a touchdown his mom and dad have been married for 35 years and they are going to celebrate with their son after this one tonight just think they met at another SEC school they met at Ole Miss both have their graduate I mean doctorate degrees dad is a bishop the church in Mississippi actually has about a two or three state region yeah, of the uh, Methodist Episcopal Church. And he's got a sister who I believe has her doctorate. So for him, that's what's expected in terms of academics and in the classroom. Congratulations, Thomas Brown. Look at our amazing pictures provided by the DLP Amazing Picture Camera. DLP, the official HD TV of the BCS on Fox. It's amazing, it's the mirrors. Here's what the camera saw on that last touchdown a moment ago. With Thomas Brown. We'll get back to that momentarily. Ryan Mouton from the three. A 38-3 Georgia lead. Mouton out to the 40 to midfield and tackled at the 44-yard line. Good return by Ryan Mouton. You got, the, you got two fullbacks in. Chap is 49, Sutherland 36. Big push up front. Look like Vince Vance, number 72, who's come into the ball game for Trenton Sturdivant. Plenty of guys wedging just enough of a crack for Thomas Brown to vault through for the touchdown. Well, Brennan right back out there is hit on 21 of 34, 163 yards without a touchdown pass tonight and three interceptions. He has been sacked seven times and hit three times that night. Shovel pass batted down, incomplete. And the reason that's not a fumble is because he can throw it, he can throw it on it. As long as that's thrown behind the line of scrimmage like that, as the guy comes down the line underneath, goes down as an incomplete forward pass. Another round of American Idol makes its season premiere two weeks from tonight. Charles, I know you'll be dialed in. I know what I want. Your daughter's a big fan of that show. Big fan. Big fan. But you know what she really likes most of all? She likes watching the auditions. You know, seeing the people come in and, and 
And usually she is, when she sees a particularly bad one, she says, well, if they can do it, you can do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> so she knows my singing ability is pretty limited. Third and long for the Warriors. They're in the Superdome. A lot of uh, enthusiasm before the game tonight. Still a lot of enthusiasm on the Georgia side, but this place will be turned inside out come Monday night. Of course, the LSU Bengal Tigers, a short trip down the road from Baton Rouge. And I'm not sure anybody in the country travels as well as Ohio State. If they do, it's only going to be a tie because no one travels better than Ohio State. Brennan, a quick slant to Rivers, and that's to the 38-yard line. C.J. Bird on the coverage and limping off is Rivers, who had one of the most memorable games in bowl history last year. In fact, set an NCAA record with 308 receiving yards against Arizona State. Yesterday, going to our Fox NFL seminars and hearing, you know, some former players that had nothing but bad things to say about four wide receivers in this kind of offense, and you can't win, you can't do this, you can't do that. Peyton Manning and company, granted, almost identical last year. In the previous down marker. You know, Uga, any ideas? You see those ice bags? Uga's ready to, to, to those take ice a bags seat. Are to keep, those ice bags are to keep him cool. He actually lays on those to try and keep him cool. Correction, the ruling on the field is reversed. It was an incomplete pass. That was a fourth down play. Ball goes over on downs. First down, Georgia. There we have it. And Ugg is ready to cool off that boiler a little bit. <laughs> Working up a lather down there. <laughs> he, he's, he, Look at that boiler getting chilled down a bit. How about, how about, how about Ugg's, the, the, the family that raises the Uggas? I think they've been doing that for excess of 50 years. Yep. The Siler family. Talk about a labor of love. But Uggle lives better than a most of us. A lot of people us. look like Uggle waking up this morning <laughs> here in New Orleans. Welcome to the new year. <laughs> Pass is completed to Michael Moore, and he is one out of bounds at the 38 yard line. You were talking about the family that raises Ugga. I mean, that's good stuff. It is great stuff. Ugga's big. Hey, not only that, when Ugga was in the movie in the Garden of Good and Evil, the owner, I believe it's Sonny Siler, he was also in the movie. Played a judge in the movie. Big time, big time trial attorney, I believe he is. And the whole family just got star written all over him. And let me tell you something. We're going to see Mike the Tiger come rolling in here from the championship game who has a $1.5 million habitat he lives in on campus. Life's good. Ugg is not far from living the same way. He has a trailer, air conditioning. Nice. Talk about a dog's life is pretty darn good. It would be nice if all of them had that life. <laughs> yes, it would be. It would be nice if we had that life. What are you talking about? They're down to the 35-yard line. And that will be the final play, you would assume, of this third quarter. So 15 minutes to go at the All-State Sugar Bowl and the Bulldogs offense sprinting down the field. They're ready for this final quarter in the careers of many. George on its way. For a final chapter leading. Welcome back to the All-State Sugar Bowl. Our BCS Bowl Bash here on Fox. Our game summary presented by Dodge. No Sean Marino in the opening quarter, a pair of touchdown runs. Solid night for Stafford. Yes. The big story, the Georgia defense. Seven sacks. Howard has four of them, including the sack and the fumble recovery for a touchdown. You still going right now through three quarters of Mr. Howard as your MVP tonight? Oh, no question. Yeah. I mean, he's just been, he's been a force that they've had no answer for all evening. You and I do not vote. We, are, we have no vote. But if we can influence someone. Yeah. Massaquan. Close to a first down. He has a first down. As the fourth quarter is underway. 
The Fox Sports crew, that would be the pregame show crew, travels <laughs> to the BCS Bowl games, powered by NetJets with their marquee <laughs> jet car. <laughs> Hold a second. Do you have one of those? <laughs> no, I do don't. Do you have a NetJet car, NetJets card? No, that would belong to Chris, <laughs> Rose. Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> and a handful others. And there, there's his platinum. <laughs> it's a big time car. But you and I are down here for the duration That's anyway. Right. They've got to hey. get all the way to Phoenix the tomorrow Phoenix. night. They're flying back after the game to tonight. Miami. And after the game tomorrow night, they fly across country all the way to Miami. So good for them. Shoved out of bounds at the 22 yard line. They continue to throw. So, I mean, you take a look at the Jet, you look, a look at, at where they're going. This is some serious fun. They came from LA yesterday. Got in about, what, 11.30 last night. Now flew, will fly tonight to Phoenix. Fly after the game tomorrow night all the way to the FedEx Orange Bowl. And then right back here. Actually, for Jimmy, I take that back. Jimmy's got to go back to Los Angeles. Right. For the NFL on Fox and Sunday for the playoff game. Back. That's right. Jimmy's got some major league travel. Okay, our bad. Enjoy the jet. You deserve it. He does. But can a brother get a ride just one time? No, they, no. You know that. Just one time. <laughs> Play a game by the offense. Five yard penalty. Replay second down. Let's go downstairs to Chris Myers, who doesn't have his net jet card on. <laughs> well, Jimmy Johnson needs that jet to carry all his hair gel and hairspray wherever he's <laughs> going. Uh, we can't because we care. Matthew Stafford, he wears number seven because you talked about his arm strength. John Elway, one of his heroes, but he grew up in Highland Park in Dallas where Troy Aikman, our own Troy Aikman, the former Cowboy, just built a big house. And so he really grew up an Aikman fan. And he said that once he met Mark Rick, that recruiting was over. It's a guy he wanted to play for. And he described his personality as calm and relaxed, much like his coach. Stafford had a snatch at juggled snap out of the air. Turns the corner and then runs out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Coach won't stay very calm and relaxed if he sees snaps like that continue. No. But we talk about Highland Park, Chris, uh, bringing that up. From Texas, his journey to Georgia, meeting Mark Rick was part of it. But there were there was another, you know, there were other things that brought him there, a lot of different connections. And now they're seeing what they call the Stafford effect back in Highland Park. Applications to the University of Georgia for high school students from his school. There are about 150 applications now. Normally they're talking about one, two, that would go to the University of Georgia before Matthew Stafford matriculated there. And to the corner of the end zone, a jump ball, Evans. For Newberry, I beg your pardon, along with Massaquan, it's incomplete. Fourth down and on comes Katoo. Coming right at you. Putting some air under it. Nice positioning by Myron Newberry getting in front of Massaquad and knocked the ball away. Nice defensive play. 45 yard attempt for Katoo. He's already hit from 52 tonight, which, by the way, is a BCS bowl game record, and this one just drilled. Man, what a leg that kid has. He could have made two from 65 tonight. Maybe longer than that. Big lead night for the two. The All-State Sugar Bowl on Fox is sponsored by Dodge. Live to the fullest. Dodge, grab life. By FedEx, go air, go ground, go football. And by Budweiser. Reach for the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, the great American lager. Hawaii, it's just Hawaii. It, it, it's, it's, it's the theme in Hawaii. I, I always joke that it seems like sometimes in Hawaii, the game is who can be nicer, you know, who, who can be more, you know, giving and more, you know, open and more enjoyable to be around. I mean, they stress having fun in life more than anything else. The one thing we learned after spending a couple of days around this Hawaii team, it's a team very much faith driven, Charles. I think it's safe to say their head coach, June Jones, a man of great faith, especially since that car wreck where he was told by a doctor that medicine and the medical profession had nothing to do with saving his life. The doctor said it was divine intervention. But there is certainly a spirituality about this team that uh, that is very different from many of the teams, all of the teams, quite frankly, that you and I think have been around the last couple of years. And when we talk about spirituality and faith, we're talking about a sense of brotherhood. It's not just talking religious. You know, that, that's one of the things about this Hawaii team. What do they call it, Ohani? Mm -hmm. 
Ohana. Ohana family. Ohana, the sense of family. Family didn't nece doesn't necessarily mean blood. Quick example, they have a freshman who's redshirting, who did not make the trip, Daniel Matiago, whose mother was passing away in the hospital. Free kick out of bounds by the kicking team. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line, first down. He called one of his teammates, told him how grief-stricken he was. They all came to visit her before she passed away. Our All-State Good Hands play of the game. We have said the name Marcus Howard a great deal tonight. Biggest play of his career. A sack here in the All-State Sugar Bowl. Fell on top of the fumbled ball by Brennan. Touchdown, Marcus Howard. He really could have put him in for two good hands plays. Remember the tip ball? He yep. tipped it three times before Donnell Ellerby picked it off. He's been an awfully active young man at defensive end this evening. Bolt Bennett on the field for the final quarter of his unbelievable three-year career at Hawaii. Born in Laguna Beach, California, grew up in Santa Ana, where he was once Matt Leinert's backup at Modern Day High School. Spent one year at a prep school in Massachusetts. And you heard the story in our pregame show, if you weren't with us. He walked on in Colorado and then got into trouble. Pleaded guilty to trespassing and burglary charges. Spent seven days in jail, was dismissed from the Colorado team. Transferred to Saddleback college in California played one year and then in castaway like fashion wound up in Hawaii where he turned his career and his life around another sack this one by Gino Atkins and Brennan has not gotten up and it's almost to the point now he's been hit so many times number one you think please let him get get up but number two at this point Maybe it's just time for him to take a breather. You know he wants to stay in there, though. But he's going to have to come out for at least one play because the trainers came out to see him, but he's a, a big-time competitor. I just wonder as many hits as he's taken tonight. Maybe get him a break. Tyler Gronke is the backup, the junior out of Tucson, Arizona. Let's go downstairs again to Chris Meyer. Tom on the Hawaii sideline while we check out Cole Brennan's injury he almost left after his junior year in fact was planning on it when his coach June Jones said to him and the Chargers San Diego Charger job at open people talked about whether June's might June might be called for that pro job and he made a deal with Cole he said if you come back I promise you no matter who calls for the pros or any other job I'm staying to coach this team Cole Brennan said you got it I'm back and of course the year that the two of them had together and on the pros goes the quarterback what happens to the coach is another story. Javon does the catch from Tyler Gronke. And there are you know there, there are uh, many rumors out there. Uh, we all know there's going to be a number of changes at the next level of football in the NFL as far as coaching carousel is concerned. Already some of that has started already with Brian Billick in Baltimore. But you know look. It's going to be mighty hard to continue this whole operation at Hawaii. Not to say it can't be done, because no. June Jones has done it. He's done it, and he can continue to crank it. I mean, the, just the, you know, the money that they make from this one, they pour it into some of the infrastructure for the football program, yep. helps upgrade the facilities. You know, they're expecting to clear a little more than $4 million as it delivers another strike down field, Rocky does. So if you put some of that in there, upgrade some things, give him a little more money for recruiting and other things, he can continue to keep this going. That might make it attractive enough because his contract does come up at the end of this year. So it's up to him. Plus, don't forget the, the colleges all are sniffing around at June Jones, too. There's a whole lot of that in the NCAA level. Hey, is June available? Hey, would you be up there? He's still in there for Brennan. And a catch made by Devon Bess. Or no, C.J. Hawthorne, I'm sorry. Number two, a flag is down. Cole Brennan, you know, wants to get right back in there. I don't think it's a bad thing that Coach Jones holds him out for a while. He's had a very tough night. 
Well, you remember early in the year. By number two on the defense against an eligible receiver, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. I mean, with three games to go in the season, Brennan had had what everybody thought was a concussion, although all of the symptoms of the typical, if you will, concussion really weren't there. But they made sure. But June Jones recognizing Colt Brennan's future and what may lie after football. He said, you know what? We might be undefeated. We might have three games to play, three games to win to get to a BCS game. You're not going to play. Play two, two, two plays. plays. And they had to beat Nevada with Gronke as a quarterback. And Tyler Gronke is in the game now, leading the way. Running hard is Daniel Libre. He's down to the 23-yard line. A junior from the main island. Well, we've talked about how difficult it's been, but a picture always tells a thousand or more words about what kind of an evening it's been. Been pressured, harassed, hit, flushed from the pocket. And the more times he's been dropped and bumped into, Ball comes free, touchdown for Georgia. The accuracy has gone down, which is normal for any quarterback going through the duress he's gone through this evening. Rocky, a strike and a first down catch made by Rivers, and he's to the 15, called the 16-yard line before he's run out of bounds. Don't you like what you're seeing from Hawaii right now, though? You know, with the kind of evening they've had, they could have very easily just tucked this whole thing away. But you don't see that out of this team. You know, you, you, see, what the, you see where the pride is. Understanding what they've come over here to try to do probably isn't going to happen, but they're going to do it to the best of their abilities. And Tyler Gronke played well in his start against Nevada. 33 of 46, 358 yards and a touchdown in a game they obviously had to have, and Dan Kelly kicked the winning field goal. First down, Gronke with time, throws to the end zone and batted down. Good coverage, good closing speed. There by Keelan Johnson. Oh, what a delightful kid he is. Uh, you know, another kid in a day and age where you don't see a lot of it. A mother and a father that met during college at Bethune Cookman. They've been married 29 years. And his mom and dad told him every day of his life, Keelan, there are a lot of things in this life you don't know. One thing you can always know is your mom and dad love you. Yes, they do. And he is a self-described mama's boy, so he's got to talk to mom every day or he just doesn't feel right. Shovel pass to Libre, and he's to the 15-yard line. For more on Colt Brennan, let's go back downstairs to Chris Myers. Well, they examined his lower back, Tom, but it was interesting. In the last couple of series, Colt Brennan twice tried to run out onto the field. June Jones said, no, stay back. We want to make sure you're OK. He was practically begging to get back in the game. And even at halftime, I asked June Jones how physically Brennan was. He said he was shaking up, hit a little bit, uh, but strong enough to go. But uh, obviously a little bit sore right now, anxious to try and get back into the game. It appears his coach won't let him at this point. Rocky steps up and a touchdown for Ryan Bryce Mullen. 16 yards and Brennan happy but certainly frustrated. He wanted to be the guy to throw that touchdown. Doesn't matter the score for the Hawaii fans, the band. They've come a long way to see the first touchdown in BCS history for the Hawaii Warriors, and they're going to celebrate it for all their worth. Point after is good by Dan Kelly. So the first touchdown comes with 10.32 to play in the final quarter for a team which averages 46 points per game. 16 yards, Rocky to Bryce Mullen. and 
Athens, Georgia band, R.E.M. We've had some good musical groups come out of that area. B-52s. There you go. A little Love Shack. You better believe it. Huh? R.E.M., that was a big-time group. I remember being in school, and their hits were everywhere. But, you know, being in Knoxville, we couldn't play R.E.M. because they were from Athens. That's exactly you right. You know, in SEC country, they draw the lines That's everywhere. exactly right. <laughs> Doesn't matter what it's about. Marcus Brown, number 11, back. 41 to 10, Georgia in front. And Brown across the 25 to the 30, the kicker to beat. Marcus Brown down the sideline, and Kelly got hands on him and catching him all the way from behind. Brian Kamala. Got to give it up to Ryan Kaomaka. He didn't give up on the play and a great run back by Ramarcus Brown. Not even close did they come to giving up on the play. A reminder coming up tomorrow night the BCS Bull Bash continues. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl from Glendale, West Virginia, and Oklahoma. Our coverage begins on Fox at 7 30 Eastern. 30 Pacific. Greg Lumpkin gets the football. You know they so badly want to get this young man a touchdown. I mean, when you think that his freshman year in 2003 carried for over 500 yards, he missed the entire following season hurt. Came back, rushed for 335 yards as a junior, as a sophomore rather. And then was their leading rusher last season. In fact, the final two games of the year wins against Auburn and Georgia Tech. Lumpkin was the man. He was number one on the depth chart when the season began. He hurt his thumb, came back, hurt his knee, and has only played in a total of five games the entire year. And they throw it into the end zone and again out of the hands of Tony Wilson. Joe Cox, by the way, is now taking over at quarterback. Backup who followed Chris Leak in high school in North Carolina. One of the great programs there, Independence, I believe, in North Carolina, Charlotte. Oh, yeah. But Craig Lumpkin went to Mark Rick during bowl prep and said, listen, I know I've been hurt. I know I've been able to, to run with the first unit and all that. I just want to find a way to contribute in this my final game. He's got, he got his graduate. He graduated last year. Came back for this season. So he'll find a way to contribute. And then he tweaked his hamstring in bowl prep. He's working on a master's degree. Yes, he is. Young guy hasn't had much luck with injuries lately. That's for sure. Well, both of these seniors, both Lumpkin and Brown, have been nicked up for the better part of the last year, if not year and a half. In Brown's case, the ACL last season. You're going to make him get back on the field. I think Hawaii was signaling for a timeout, and Hawaii doesn't have any timeouts. <laughs> no flag. Blitz coming. Cox steps up. Incomplete. Jay Gartrell, the intended target. After Hawaii signaled for the timeout with no timeouts left, in basketball, we know that's a technical foul and, you know, lost possession. In football, just check with Dave Kutea, the supervisor of officials for the Pac-10. It's no foul. He you know, just gets waved off. You start, you know, you just go ahead and start the down again and play. That's why there is no flag. I think I think they, they got confused about what they wanted to do. Forty-one ten, Georgia in front. Take a look at the Fox jumper scope. The touchdown a moment ago for Hawaii. Their first tonight. Hawaii's offense bet predicated on timing and precision. Watch how this ball is coming out of Tyler Gronke's hand. 
and watch the receiver. He has not even turned his head to look. Trust, understanding where you're supposed to be. Ball delivered at the end of the play. He had broken free. That timing, not much in evidence most of the night due to Georgia's defense putting so much pressure on Colt Brennan. Fourth down and goal, and the dogs are going to go for it. Rolling out as Cox throws, and it's right through the midst of senior Sean Bailey. I talked about the Fiesta Bowl coming your way. Tostitos Fiesta Bowl tomorrow night. Last year, Charles, you and I were there. Boise State against Oklahoma. Down by seven. Jared Zabransky, the hook and ladder play, working to perfection. Jared Rabb runs it in for the touchdown. Peterson in the overtime gives Oklahoma the lead. Following a Derek Schumann touchdown, Ian Johnson, the two-point conversion on the Statue of Liberty to win it for the Broncos, 43-42 to in overtime. And more Tostitos Fiesta Bowl action coming your way tomorrow night right here on Fox's Art. BCS Bull Bash continues. What a catch made by C.J. Hawthorne on the throw from Tyler Brockie. And what a throw by Tyler Gronke, who took a real wallop back in the pocket. That was beautifully done on both ends. Gronke standing and delivering, and Hawthorne laying out to catch the football. Bealy, the warrior, still hard at work tonight. Never slowed down. And I watched him when it was 41 to 3, and he was still going to work. Farmer run down from behind by Akeem Dent, redshirt freshman from Atlanta. Tom, Under we're, nine minutes. Tom, really, we were talking about brotherhood in Hawaii and how they do things. On the night before the Nevada game, June Jones called the team together and told them that Colt Brennan wouldn't play very much, if at all, the next day. The whole team went up one by one and told Tyler Gronke how much they believed in him, how much they cared about him, and kind of affirmed him as their quarterback going into the next game. And he delivered a big time performance and a win for Hawaii. Catch made by Bryce Mullen. There's got to be a flag on that play. And there right? is. I it's, mean, it's there. You know, it's there. I got to tell you, Charles, I mean, we've got 10 minutes left in this game. And, you know, you never tell your kids to stop playing right. hard. But George has gone for it, throwing on fourth down inside the five here a moment ago. And now you're getting some kids who haven't played a lot this season or played a lot tonight. But and they're that little, makes you scratch your head a little bit. Yeah, a little too much exuberance at the end of the play, Rashad Jones. and After the play, Personal foul, number 50 on the defense, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. And then what you've got there, whistles were blowing, guys getting in a little bit too much on that one. The going for it on fourth and five with the backup quarterback, you see a lot of that in, in, in football. You know, I got my backups in, I give them an opportunity to run offense and play. I, I'm, I'm not sure it's in the forefront of Mark Rick's mind, but they have talked about getting set up for next year. Yep where they talked about finishing on a positive note, going into the polls higher next year because they believe that they should be playing for a national championship the way the season you know ended what, this year. Sure, but let me ask you now, seriously. I'm, I'm just saying, you, you know, I'm not going to buy into that poll stuff next year. I mean, you really, actually, you really actually, believe actually voters do. sitting around in August I are going to remember what you did in the fourth quarter, leading a team by 31 points. There's an interception. You really believe yeah, that those voters, when they sit down, they say, well, this team won their bowl game by 30, and another team won their game by 40. So the team that won by 40, I'll put them higher in the rank. I don't think it's that technical, but I think they like to see how teams finished up. And if they have a bunch of guys coming back the next year, they go, oh, that's my hot ticket for next year. And that's what Mark Rick's looking at. He remembers Auburn not starting high in the polls, costing them one year. So he's trying to position his team as best he can. Again, I don't think it's forefront in his mind, but I don't think it's totally out of it either because he has talked about it. BC rec BCS record sixth turnover in the game tonight. They've been absolutely relentless on defense. Yeah, they've been great. Just relentless the whole evening. And I don't want to 
want anybody to think that, uh, that I'm sitting up here part picking on Mark Rick. Not at all. I mean, we, he is a delightful guy. He's a kind man. He's an open man, a compassionate man. I mean, some of the things he's done in his personal life, taking his family on uh, church missions to Honduras. He has four children. Two of them came the usual way. Another two were adopted from an orphanage in the Ukraine back in 1999. I mean, he's just a delightful guy, delightful family. I'm just looking at a game where a team is getting run into ground. And you're throwing the ball on fourth down inside the 10 yard. It's a legitimate question. I understand the question. I think that I really think that when he has backups in the game, he wants to give them every opportunity to shine also. Good point. Incompleted pass on first down. Second down throw there, I beg your pardon, by Cox. There you see the most turnovers in a BCS game. Oklahoma and Miami each with five. But tonight, Hawaii six. The quarterback has been sacked eight times in the game. It's been a long night. Georgia has been spectacular on defense. No two ways about it. Here's Lumpkin, and he's tackled out of the 34. So Georgia will punt it away. Yep, they can go ahead and get those ready to get distributed. The All-State Sugar Bowl champs 2008. This will take Georgia to 2-1 and one in BCS games all time. All of them Sugar Bowl appearances. West Virginia game we touched on earlier, the game that's played in Atlanta after Katrina where they lost in that one. Big win, obviously, for them here tonight. Florida State in another Sugar Bowl. Well, this has really been an unbelievable run that, uh, that Mark Rick has had in Georgia. I mean, when you look at what the Bulldogs have done. Remains fourth down. Georgia has the best record in the Southeastern Conference. Number one over the last six years, over the last 11 years. The last six seasons, 63 wins against only 15 losses. And one of these days, they're going to get a shot for the national championship game. It's going to happen. The way this program is operating, I think they were tied with LSU for that figure coming into this one. It's a, it's a, it's a really a remarkable job that he's done here. And considering the level of competition in the conference, getting people ready to play each and every week against that competition. Michael Washington now to the 25. Of course, it was 1980 season, correct? Capped off in the 81 Sugar Bowl. Georgia against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. A first quarter kickoff is handled by Notre Dame. Bob Kelly recovered it. Two plays later, Herschel. One of his two touchdowns, he finished with 150 rushing yards, was the Super, uh, Sugar Bowl MVP. And Georgia crowned national champions under head coach Ben Schooling, 17-10 winner. You know, I was talking with a friend as we have a Georgia player down after that play. I was talking with a friend about that game. And he said, and I can't quote the, the numbers directly, but he said in that game, Notre Dame outrushed Georgia. Notre Dame outpassed Georgia. Herschel ran for 150, but Georgia finished with less yards in that running the ball because of other people having lost and they end up winning the ball game. Talk about resourceful. Oh yeah. There's the two kickoffs that weren't fielded and they were scoring short fields. Marcus Dobbs getting up slowly. Someone well, someone's always assigned to get the punter. Now one thing to remember about that is that was a clean block on the front end. I mean, it was, just because you're the punter, you're still you're still legal to be lined up and taken out, Mr. Brian Mims. Timo Payapule. I mean, what he got was a shot in the back afterwards from Mr. Mims. Well, at least Mr. Mims not backing down. No, he's not backing down. Just you're supposed to take him from the front. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I checked the rule book. There you get a look at the All-State Sugar Bowl trophy, which will be presented 
to the Georgia Bulldogs at the end of this one. Pass in the shovel pass doesn't matter how it's thrown overhand sidearm underhand doesn't matter as long as it's forward pass ball batted back incomplete not a fumble so very clear that June Jones is going to play the rest of this one with his backup Tyler Gronke I applaud him for it frankly you know whether Colt could come back or not is not the not the question you know I just I just think think the idea of hey you've had a marvelous career here. This is not happening tonight. You've showed your courage. You've hung in there. We know you're a competitor. Son, it's over for this one. We love you. Catch made by Bryce Mullen, and he falls out of bounds in the 42, depending if they were to give him forward progress on the spot. NFL playoffs open this weekend, and the NFL on Fox will come your way. At noon Eastern on Sunday, 9 Pacific. The New York Giants travel to Tampa Bay to take on the Buccaneers. Be a good football game there. That's going to be a good one. Wonky a bullet to Devon Ness, and that's a first down to the Georgia 47 yard line. Two things hit me as we watch Hawaii go down the field here. We talked about Georgia, which has been rotating linemen and linebackers every snap the whole ball game to keep them fresh. Hawaii's four main receivers hardly ever come off the field. Incredible conditioning to run patterns and come back. We're not used to seeing that out of very many programs. And Tyler Gronke getting some experience in now. You know where he opens his season next year? In the Swamp, the swamp. in Florida. Season right. opener for Hawaii. Tyler Gronke should be the quarterback. Off the hands of best run, a little bit behind. Ronke has hit on 9 of 13 for 104 yards since coming on behind Brennan. And of course, has thrown their only touchdown pass of the game. Well, June Jones, three times, has been the WAC Conference Coach of the Year, mentored. Quarterbacks Timmy Chang and Colt Brennan, both of whom, of course, rewrote the NCAA record books. They won a total, a total of 12 games in five years before Jones' arrival. So Libre takes it down to the 38 yard line. And of course, they did not win a single game the year before he took over as head coach. In his first year, they won nine games, went from 0 and 12. To nine and four. One of the remarkable turnarounds. And, you know, Chris Myers talked earlier about talking to Jerry Glanville, and he talked about the job June Jones has done, maybe one of the better jobs out there. In a sense, Bill Snyder esque, what he did at Kansas yep. State. You know, based on what we've talked about with recruiting budgets and facilities and trying to get players and not being able to recruit the mainland, incredible job he's done. Run out of bounds. At the 20 yard line is Jason Rivers playing in his final game as a Warrior tonight. Again, let's check in with Chris. Well, the support for the Hawaii football team has gathered momentum with June Jones, but going back to 1923, Hawaii football, when they traveled to California to play in the Rose Bowl, it took a five day boat trip. Over years, travel improved a nine hour airplane ride until we got into the jet age and at that time they'd stay a couple of weeks on the mainland to play and now just a seven or eight hour flight but they have been well represented here June Jones asked the fans to wear white he said we may be an island we may play on an island but we are not an island in Hawaii shuttle pass to Libre wrapped up in tackle I mean some of the ways that some of the fans got here from the Hawaiian Islands just staggering how badly they wanted to get here. I met a guy today that went from Honolulu to San Francisco to Los Angeles to Atlanta and finally to here. And that's just one of many. There's some many. that landed in Baton Rouge and drove. Mobile. Some that went to Mobile, Houston. You name it. Anywhere they could get and, and not very many direct flights. So people trying to save costs said, okay, break me in, you know, here, yep. here, here, and here, whatever it's going to take. And I read one where the guy's got to 
get in the car after this game and drive back to Houston in order to catch a flight and get back so he can make sure he makes it to work. Well, it's a once-in-a-lifetime, uh, so far, once-in-a-lifetime right, so trip. Not to say they can't get back again. Flag on the play as we're down to the three-minute mark. Holding, number 62 on the offense, 10-yard penalty, replay second down. That's Keith Asun, one of the American Samoa players on this Hawaii team. He lives on a small island. Falea Soa, an eight-hour boat ride. Now think about this for a second. An eight-hour boat ride away from the thriving metropolis of Pago Pago. So Pago Pago, the capital, and then to get to where he lives, you got to take an eight hour boat run. But his mother made the trip all the way here tonight. She's only seen him play two games as an entire career until tonight. Well, some of the amazing pictures you've seen tonight provided by the DLP amazing picture cam. DLP is the official HD TV of the BCS on Fox. It's amazing. It's the mirror. That's a cool camera. It's um, it's unbelievable. One thing we do know is that the Georgia defense tonight, no smoke, no mirrors. Just pure effort, execution, terrific game plan. And they were absolutely phenomenal tonight against the high, most high-powered offense in the country coming into the game. Into the game. Pump fake one way, down the middle the other way, and just out of the reach of Devon Bess. So fourth down, and Hawaii will go for it. No quitting these guys. They're still pitching. Same same guys out there trying to make it happen to put the numbers on the board. Didn't come all this way for nothing, did they? Didn't come this way to say, okay, it's been fun, ratty. No, not at all. I'd like to see that DLP camera on Ugga. <laughs> Are you sure? I would. Yeah, <laughs> I would. You're a dog lover. I'm a dog lover. Let's get a look at the cool camera on Ugga. <laughs> And last check, he was cooling down that boiler. <laughs> Rivers was out of bounds when he caught it. So the Warriors will turn it over on downs. We're down to the two-minute mark. Aerial coverage tonight from high above the Superdome in downtown New Orleans. Brought to you by Bud Light. Endless refreshment from start to finish. Bud Light keeps it coming. And of course, uh, we'll be right back here again on Monday night for the All-State BCS National Championship game. The number two LSU Tigers and the number one Ohio State Buckeyes. Blake Barnes, third string quarterback, will come in as a assumed victory formation. If you're the winning team, the prettiest formation in football. All right, Mr. Davis, let's take a peek ahead. To what's coming up next? It'll be the Direct TV postgame show. Chris Rose, Jimmy Johnson, Fran Tarkington have the All-State Sugar Bowl trophy presentation, and the most outstanding player you want me to take will be announced. Off? Coach Rick showing some agility. They didn't get all of him with the bucket. They got a they got a little bit, but they didn't get quite all of him. Not bad for the greatest quarterback ever as voted, I believe, in the West Palm area where he played high school football. You know, he beat out a former player of his at Florida State, Anquan Bolden, for that honor. Not many people remember that, but Mark Rick was a big-time quarterback coming out of high school, played at the University of Miami. Unfortunately, he played at the same time a young man by the name of Jim Kelly yes, played. not good time. Our game tonight produced by Mike Burks, directed by Rich Russo. Our associate directors, Tom Yowie and Darren Foster. Our broadcast associates, Justin Deutsch and Andy Cavanaugh. Our technical producer, Frank Phillips. The senior producer is Bill Brown. Our executive producers at Fox Sports, Ed Gorn and David Hill. We thank Mark Wagner, Scott Snyder, and many, many others. Our entire crew from here in New Orleans. And they're starting to 
Hand out those caps. These caps are, caps are better than gold for these guys. All their efforts culminating in a Sugar Bowl championship. And I want to thank everyone from Hawaii and Georgia yep. who helped us get ready and prepare for these games. Just terrific people all the way around. Especially both coaches. I mean, they were just wonderful in both sports information departments. On the field with uh, senior Keelan Johnson, Georgia celebrating a uh, congratulations, impressive performance. Uh, thank you so much. You know, Hawaii is a great team. Coach Brennan's a great quarterback. They had one of wide receivers, but we knew we had to get physical with them today, and, and we did that. Our, our D line played wonderful. Our secondary played wonderful. I mean, we had a wonderful coach staff, and they drilled it so hard this week. They drilled it so hard. Now, where do you think you can wind up in the final polls? Are you number one material? Uh, we're number one. You know, we're supposed to be in that national championship game. The nation know it. Everybody back home, you know it. Hey, you know, we just blessed to be here in the Sugar Bowl. It's an unbelievable experience, and we, th we thank God for it. We thank God for it. You put on quite a show, the Georgia defense. Thanks, Keelan. Thanks, thanks so much. Thanks All for right. Happy New Year, Tom. So Chris, thank you, and thanks, Keelan Johnson. We told you he is just that's if a you special want Stafford, kid. We tape it. So when we come back, the trophy presentation, and we'll name the most outstanding player. Welcome to the DirecTV postgame show on Fox. Well, we're back at the All-State Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, and a victory hug and kiss, husband and wife. She's been serving as the team's water girl, Catherine Rick, the entire season, and uh, her husband after doing it. Field Fox Sports, Chris Rose for the All-State Sugar Bowl Trophy presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of the entire All-State Sugar Bowl committee, led by its president, Ray Gendron, and its CEO, Paul Holohan, and all its wonderful volunteers, they want to thank you for a tremendous week. And it is time right now for the All-State Sugar Bowl Trophy presentation. Ray? Chris, this has been a great week for the All-State Sugar Bowl. And on behalf of the Sugar Bowl committee, I congratulate the players, the coaches, the staff, and the fans of both the University of Georgia Bulldogs and the University of Hawaii Warriors. And at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Ron Corbin, who will present the awards. Ron? Thank you, Chris. Coach Rich, on behalf of Allstate, uh, uh, 70,000 employees and agents, we'd like to congratulate you and the University of Georgia football team for an outstanding performance. And we'd like to present you with the 2008 All-State Sugar Bowl Trophy. Congratulations. Do you think your team was making a statement that perhaps you should be playing in this building on January 7th? We just played it. We just want to play as hard as we could. We're thankful for the opportunity. We love our fans. You all blacked it out one more time. Thank you, Georgia. I want to thank the, the players. They're awesome. The coaches staff is fantastic and their families, our administration. What a blessing. We're blessed to be at Georgia. We're just glad to be in this game. You know, you held Hawaii with the highest scoring offense in the entire country to season lows and points and passing yards and everything. How in the world did you not slow that team down, stop it? Well, it was a great job by Coach Martinez and his defensive staff. Our players did a beautiful job. We were healthy. We substituted seven defensive ends at least, five interior defensive linemen. The goal was to play hard every single down regardless of the score, and, and we did that. Coach, congratulations, and now it is time to award the most outstanding player for the Georgia Bulldogs. Ron, take care of that. Yeah. Marcus Howard, we'd like to congratulate you for winning the Outstanding Player Award for the 2008 All-State Sugar Bowl Trophy and uh, Outstanding Game. Congratulations. Pick it up, young man. Marcus, you are the first defensive player to win this award in almost 30 years. 
you had heard all week about the Hawaii offense. Is that what motivated you guys to put on that performance tonight? Uh, yeah, first I just want to thank the man above for just blessing me. But, um, you know, that's, that motivated us. Our defensive coordinator, Willie Martinez, told us just to come out and play fast, and that's what the defense did. You feel like you guys should be playing in this building next Monday night? Almost definitely. I feel like we're the number one team in the country. Well, a job well done. Marcus Howard, Georgia Bulldogs, congratulations. They are your 2008 All-State Sugar Bowl champions. Tom Brenneman, take it away. Chris Rose, thank you very much. Congratulations to the native South Carolinian, Marcus Howard. First year as a starter, and you cap it off by winning the most outstanding player at the All-State Sugar Bowl. That's pretty good.